Good afternoon, all of you from around the world to the beautiful city of Cape Town for day two of the 2023 Red Bull King of the Air. We are coming to you live from the city of Cape Town, Kite Beach, the kite surfing mecca of the world. In today's commentary box, Lewis, who's on the beach at the moment, but with me currently, Sam, good to have you here in the booth with us at last. Ruben Lenton, it's good to be back, boys. How's it looking for today? Conditions are looking epic. I managed to get a session on the water myself this morning, and I can't wait for the action to start. Nice one. What were you riding this morning? I was actually winging, mate. Oh, no, <laughs> don't say that. I can't say that on the stream yet. <laughs> Snuck in a quick wing session, but it's going to be epic. The wind is looking really, really good already. It is. It is. We've been feeling the anticipation, the excitement on the beach. There's something we didn't see last week, the tablecloth peeling over the majestic table mountain, cable car uh, uh, housing barely sticking out there on the corner, kite flying straight through the window. So, gents, round one and two dusted. What, is, what are we feeling like for, for round number three? Yeah, I mean, everybody uh, has gotten a nice taste in, uh, in the first day of the Red Bull King of the Air 2023, and uh, we got the first rounds out of the way. And uh, we're about to get started with round number three. And uh, all the riders are hungry to give it their all. The conditions are absolutely firing already. Uh, it's about to get low tide at four o'clock. And that means the waves will build through uh, throughout the, the event. And uh, yeah, that's uh, guaranteed epic action, as I like to say. There's some big heats coming up. The first one in particular, Jeremy versus Heel. It's a replay of their heat last year. You know, can, can Jeremy get one back at him? Also. Mark and Jamie Overbeek, I've got that, that one eye to be a big heat today. I mean, every heat is going to be a really tough heat out there. It is. And of course, two, I would say two upsets that we've already seen from round one and two. Cohen Van Dyke and Beto Gomez, both semi-finalists from last year, unfortunately being knocked out in round two. Also with some big upsets in round number one. We saw Edgar edging out Principi. We saw uh, Jason van der Spey edging out Jamie Overbeek. So, boys, it's like even just mentioning it and I start getting the jitters. Absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see what riders increase their risk factor and add handle passes today, because that seemed to make the difference with some of those heats on, the, on day one. Yeah, 100%. I mean, uh, now the riders also know what the judges are kind of looking for. Also with that, uh, yeah, uh, confirming uh, overall impression score, which comes in at the end of the heat on top of the three best scoring maneuvers. So now the riders are nicely adapted. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's going to be an amazing show today. Absolutely an amazing show indeed. There on your screen in front of you is the five-time world champion and two-time king of the air champion, Aaron Hadler, as he warms up. Doesn't have his vest on yet, so he's just warming up. There we see Jeremy, Bel Jeremy Berlando from Italy in the blue vest warming up. So exciting stuff as the guys get ready for partaking in the world's biggest and most prestigious big air kiteboarding event. But uh, on the beach again, it was so nice to get uh, a live update last year from Lewis on exactly what the conditions were. So Lewis is uh, on the beach again for us to give us an update on the conditions. What's it like? What's the vibe down there? What can we expect to see today? So Lewis, take it away, bro. How's things down there? Yeah, it looks like uh, Lewis is having a great old time right. on the beach. Wow, conditions out here. I've really just picked up this last second. I'm on a nine meter kite. I'm super powered. I'm going to take you out for a ride on the water. Let's go. The sea looks really calm and the riders are literally in front of me right now. This is one of the riders there. They'll be looking to line up off of these waves here and the best riders will be able to time it. Here's a great option for me. <laughs> Woo! It feels amazing. Talk us through that. Up in the air like this. Talk us through the feeling, oh, uh, Lewis. Wow. It's incredible. Up in the sky like that, flying around. The riders are going to be doing so much more than that. They'll be spinning, taking the ball off. But the ocean, I have to tell you, is quite cold. I'm in a shorty wetsuit. Luckily, I'm from the UK. On the way in, I can do my tricks in a lot flatter water. But the way out, I really have to engage these waves. That's how I'm going to get the high. I've just showed you 
a jump out, so I'm going to come in now. And this, this really helps the rider's impression score. Coming in and using the flat, it demonstrates to the judges that they can go right foot forward as well. So they're going to come in, throw something big on the inside. So I'll just make sure I land this, but it's okay. I've been here before. Nicely That's a controlled. Walk through about being on the water, but look how far I moved. I moved through the zone. I have to get back upwind in front of the judges, but one thing's for sure, guys, in the studio, the wind has just kicked in big time. Here we go, one more. Oh, massive boogie loop. <laughs> yeah. I love Lu it. Back to Lewis. you, guys. Sending it. Thanks so much, Lewis. Lewis, you mentioned about the overall impression score. Gents, that's what Lewis quickly mentioned. So let's take a quick sit back and uh, take a look at what does overall impression mean for the Red Bull King of the Air? Have you ever wondered what makes the Red Bull King of the Air event different than any other kiteboarding event in the world? Apart from the amazing heights, the insane action, and the beautiful venue, it's actually the unique scoring system which differentiates it. So here's the lowdown on the impression score. It was brought into the King of the Air to encourage the riders to give us the highest level of variety. We don't want to see repetition in the same three tricks. This impression score really does make the riders think outside the box and be creative. It's not just about the top three scores. This is about pushing the riders to go beyond the usual. We want them to add some serious flavor to their heats to make sure they deserve to be the king. We're talking about height, extremity, technicality, and good execution. We want riders to blend all these factors in seamlessly. And you know what else is important? Clean landings. Stick that landing and show full control. Otherwise, your points will be affected. A total wipeout, expect a big fat zero. So here's the twist. While repetition of tricks is okay for your heat score, it's the impression score that craves variety. Riders that can show us those different high scoring moves and signature moves will be racking up those impression points. The impression score is the fourth score which is added by the judges at the end of the heat. It is the secret source that often decides who takes the glory and who sent packing. It's not just about nailing tricks. It's about creating a spectacle for the crowd and the judges. So, understanding the impression score is a real art. There's no mathematical formula here. It's all about the judges' experience, a keen eye, and a deep dive into the heat's analysis. And new for this year is the live impression score. It's not set in stone, but it gives us a unique sneak peek into a rider's live impression trend. It might just flip the script on the final result, so it keeps the riders on their toes. So there you have it, the Red Bull King of the Air, where it's not just all about numbers. It's about rhythm and flow, style, and the heart-stopping moments that have made this event legendary. Oh. Great clip there from Lewis explaining the overall impression score as we see Jeremy Belando skiing across the sand there towards the iconic uh, Robin Island. Ruben, the overall impression score, we saw that already come into play last week. What are your feelings as a rider who's been out there many a time? 100%. I mean, uh, the riders uh, need to show us what they got, right? To the left, uh, to the right, and uh, yeah, not only do the same repetitive tricks, uh, of course, the riders get judged on height and extremity. Uh, which are the most important. Uh, then their uh, three top scoring tricks will determine who is on top. And then with that added overall impression score, uh, that means if riders do uh, mega loops, they do contra loops, they unhook and even throw in handle passes, that makes a complete rider. So uh, yeah, with the 12 riders left in the fleet now in round number three, uh, I am curious who, uh, who's got that game set and uh, who can play it out straight out of the gate. 
moves. Exactly, and I think it, it, I love the way you said it, just those different moves, and I think it's very important for you viewers to, to really stay on tune or on, uh, on air with us in terms of understanding the overall impression score and the influence that it has. You know, for those of you who are not as familiar with the sport, to understand, but hang on, this guy threw a bigger variety than this one, and then understanding how that comes out in the score at the end of the day. So that is the overall impression score, but there's Hill, Hill Flicht from the Netherlands, currently training in Tarifa. He's will be in the yellow vest as he, as you can see, just a gentle um, jump, just preparing. Obviously, you don't want to do too, anything too risky. Um, so it's incredible to see the epic scenery there in front of us. But a lot of discussion was had last week about board offs and the different types of board offs that we find in the King of the Air event. So let's sit back again quickly and take a quick look at uh, an interview with you and Lewis, uh, Ruben, where you guys explain the different board offs uh, to us. We are here to explain you the different kind of board of variations which the riders are throwing into their tricks here at the Red Bull King of the Air. What I find really interesting is just how detailed these board offs have got. And the judges are certainly rewarding riders for going for the more of the difficult board offs, Ruben. So there are some different kind of board offs that the riders are throwing into their tricks whilst they're looping the kite, whilst they're rotating. So we have the board spin where they grab the board by the handle and just simply spin it around and put it back on their feet. They also can grab it by the pin and then really flick it around and then grab it by the handle. But then there's a really difficult one, which is called the board flip, where they actually spin it like a finger flip like that and they can actually catch it. But yeah, there's different variations, different uh, yeah, difficulties. As soon as you let go from the board, the wind can just catch it and totally mess up your trick. You have to imagine just how difficult these skills are for the riders. We're on the sand right now, there's barely any wind, and still, we have to concentrate to get the board in the right hand at the right time. These riders are spinning around, kite looping, pulling the bar so easily, the board could come off and it could be heat over. Sounds like your signature move. <laughs> so now that we've shown you the different variations of board offs that the riders are throwing, either the tic-tac from the fin to the handle, the flip from the handle to the handle, where the riders are actually also doing the board spin from the handle, but they can also do it double. So it depends how much variety they throw in there, it definitely ups the risk and will keep the judges on their toes. Oh, great clip there for explaining the board offs. But um, I remember that interview being a little bit longer originally Ruben uh, no it was pretty quick no done, done no, and no, dusted. no 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 director can we please roll the rest of the tape borders are quite from, easy no man. no 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 I want to see the rest of the the tape on that video please director roll camera for us please and I know there's this going on here we know they all not even how you do it why would you chuck why? it because it's so on. much easier if you try the other way you just fucking break your fingers come on show me you're scared of your nails I am scared of hurting my fingers <laughs> Ow. Are you okay? Do you need Ow. Can we can we get the ambulance? I broke my nail. Can we get? You went by the handle again. Double fin. That's impossible. No, it? it isn't. I bet one of them could do it. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. Ah. <laughs> ah. Board up suck. All right, I'm out. That's hurting. I'm done. Oh. Sorry, gents. Yeah. I, I just had to conspire with the with the director on that one. <laughs> Cheers, mate. People people thought that we were uh, skilled at board offs. Now, uh, yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> to continue the debate from last week, basically, I thought I thought it would be very appropriate. But uh, good work, gents. I think it was excellent to see those board offs in slow motion, so that you viewers at home can gain a deeper appreciation and insight into the level of skill that is actually required for for the king of the air and not just executing those borders but executing them in extreme positions at heights and in mega loops Hi. but um moving moving on to day number two and here we have the ladder for the event thus far on the left round one and then working to your right round two ruben what have we seen so far what have we seen so far? I mean, uh, some epic heats already. Um, but yeah, I think Jeremy Berlando is definitely a crowd favorite. Uh, really showed that uh, he, he's got the tricks, he's got the confidence, he's got the mindset. But also Giel Vlucht, you know, he's, uh, he's been hungry to win competitions. He's got all the tricks. He invented the double mega loop. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a heat uh, with straight fire, fire when the green flag goes up. So uh, Edgar Ulrich showed us some phenomenal riding with some tricks uh, yeah, that are absolutely next level, such as the, the mega loop KGB. So really unhooking after the mega loop or during the mega loop and then passing the bar. That's uh, yeah, pretty risky and uh, he just nailed that perfectly. So I'm very curious to see what he's got. And uh, obviously Stein Mull, a Dutchie, 
uh, fellow countryman, and uh, yeah, he's been stepping it up as well. And uh, I'm looking forward to see uh, who's going to take that heat. No, oh, I'm looking at that bottom heat for you, Lewis. Lewis, welcome in the booth, back from the ocean. I see you wet this time. Uh, never wet, completely dry, hair still dry. Cheers. Yeah, you got, ain't got any, mate. <laughs> that was wonderful out there, guys. I have to say, just as I started that piece, the wind picked up five, seven knots, and you just got all of those feelings and sensation, Rubens. Uh, Ruben, I should say, when we've been out there before competing, you're like, wow, what a timing. This is such good timing for this first heat. So, no, no, as you say, um, perfect, perfect timing there with the wind filling in. Kickers, I love the low, the tide is going down, uh, which means the kickers are only going to get even better. There in your front, in the front of you, I believe that is Stein Mull from the Netherlands. But uh, here we go. Sequence is underway. Lewis. Heat one, heat 13, to 13, but basically first heat of the day. Yeah, I got a lot on these two guys. Jeremy Belando then really is one of the favorites here today. He's got the highest trick score so far, 7.2 in the whole event for a, a double loop front roll with a, a double board off as well. And he's also got the highest heat score so far, 25.76. Sorry, I'm so excited <laughs> from my session out there. But he was dumped out of a Lord of Trams early on in the year in round three. He got to the semis at the World Champions in three for... He got to the final of the Red Bull Mega Loop. He only finished fourth. So will this be uh, his event to really make a name for himself and get on the podium proper? But yeah, definitely part of the next generation and uh, showing that he's uh, one of the top dogs here, one of the event favorites. Uh, but he's got to take on Giel Vlucht, the, the OG double G. So um, yeah, let's see who's got this going on. Uh, the heat is about to start in seven seconds. So this is going to be very exciting. Thank you all for tuning in. For the, to the Red Bull King of the Air 2023. You're here with me, Ruben Lenton, Lewis Crathern, and Colin Heckrood. Oh, love it, gents. It's good to be here. And there we go. The buzzer goes as we enter into the start of day two, 11 days into the waiting period for the 2023 Red Bull King of the Air. Gil Flucht getting us underway with a nice mega loop late back roll. That was a double, mate. I think it was a double late back roll. So a double mega loop with a late back roll. Well, if we can get a replay then of that wide angle, that would be amazing. So, uh, oh, well, that would be a that would be a start and half. Ruben, that was quite hard to tell from that shot there, personally, for me. How, how what made you think that? Do you have the bar pulled for that extra bit of time? I mean, you must be on. Yeah, what do you think an eight meter here? But here goes Jeremy. We'll come back to you on that. Jeremy Belando sets off of a big wave into a back roll. His foot's come off. He's gone for it anyway, Ruben. What happened wow, there? Wow, oh, that's not a great way to start. He's losing a. He's uh, losing the board there midair, so now he's uh, quite a bit away from his board, costing him some valuable time. Whilst Giel Vlucht, I believe he kicked off with a double mega loop uh, in this heat. He had uh, to, Ruben. It's a 6.7. They wouldn't have given that for a straight, simple one. Back in our day, we would have enjoyed that score for that uh, simple move, but it, it was difficult to spot. So good spot there, Ruben. You're winning the day with a great spot. On the inside, no, the body, the body language tells us a lot, guys, about what they're going to do. So I think Giel's going to go... Again, left foot. And I think we're going to see a front roll variation, uh, some sort of boogie loop with the board off. The riders like that front roll into the board. Let's see if he can connect here, though. Well, Giel Vlucht, he's got so many variations on the mega loop and also with the double mega loop and even the S loop. The S loop is where the rider pulls the mega loop and then at the critical section when the kite is down there, they uh, decide to pull it the other way and uh, yeah, create some free fall momentum and hopefully they're high enough so the kite can climb up and uh, give them the lift they need to land softly. So, uh, yeah, if he already pulled the double mega loop, this is uh, definitely a great start to the Red Bull King of the Air 2023, uh, day two. I mean, gents, we, we didn't see many 6.7s last week. What does that tell you about the conditions that we have for today? Great point, Colin. It's picked up clearly and simply to be getting the doubles in. And just like I said, when I was out there, I was feeling it. But uh, let's see then, let's move to core now. It's core against Slingshot in this one. Looks like the riders are just trying to find those wins. And just to give you an idea of how many tricks the riders can do in this short period of time, 10 minutes, they can do 10 tricks. Some of the top riders, Mark Jacobs, scoring 10 tricks in his and zero crashes in his knees. So let's see if the riders can push it up to that. Zero crashes. That's what the judges love, right? For the overall impression score. Like if you have a super clean heat, then most likely your impression score is going to go through the roof if you did the different maneuvers as well. But uh, that's what the judges are looking for. And uh, yeah, the riders want to put the, the best scoring tricks on the map and give a great show whilst they're at it. And here from the drone, we see the double mega loop with a front roll. So a boogie loop double. Really, really nice. Beautiful shot. What a stunning shot there from the drone. Great point that you, you raised there, Jen. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's 10-minute heats. This is knockout, knockout stages. Two men heats from here on until we get to the finals where it will be back to three men. But no more flag out sequence. It's 10 straight minutes. The top 
three tricks will count and then that fourth overall impression score jeremy good forward momentum off the kicker there's a board spin in there a front roll with the kite loop as well multiple rotations nice and clean from jeremy Belando. and whilst i can get this in quickly both of these riders have got lots to prove here as uh he'll get smashed they've both sort of been there and thereabouts this year we didn't speak about here we got to the quarterfinals at the lords of tram he got to the world championships final but only finished fourth he got to the mega loop the red bull mega loop in the semis and guess who knocked him out boys it was jaybo jeremy Belando. so some revenge maybe here on the cards yes i mean these guys are hungry and um as you can see lots lots goes into play at pinpointing uh yeah the right kicker the right wave maintaining your speed the sea is moving the wind is moving you really have to feel it and uh, connect the dots. Uh, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a, a game on it of its own, right? Okay, a good example there with Hill, not getting the kicker and the timing that he wanted as he just did a simple straight jump. He'll come back in towards the beach. Great footage there from our drone. If you are concerned about the drone footage, as you can see, it's tilted slightly to your right on the screen. That just gives you an idea of how strong the wind is that the drones have to fly slightly sideways in order to keep up with these riders. But there's Hill flucht in front of you. Nice little pop over the kicker. Oh, this looks good make it he's though. gonna bring it up yes he's oh and again oh first oh, s loop oh, there it is the s loop you saw he did a mega loop and he decided oh. to pull it the other way i think he just lost a couple of meters there guys that wave just looked like it was closing out you saw the spray come off his it board he it didn't get him. quite the height that maybe would have meant a clean landing there so this is still poised i mean hill's in a nice position here what's he saying there was he asking for a bigger cut i don't know riders can change their kites remember those of you watching at home kiteboarding for the first time they have different size kites for different wind conditions they range from 15 meters squared all the way down to sort of eight meters seven meters squared the smaller kites are used for the strongest wind we've got about eights and nines out there at the moment this is a good example of uh, the difference between the kickers from last week and today the kickers today are a little bit smaller which means the waves are going to break a little bit faster so the riders are going to have to be a lot more on their toes in terms of when to hit that kicker that was a very good example they would heel flip like you said lewis not quite as much height as what he would have wanted and therefore the landing was a bit sketchy i think he'll score but it was a bit of a sketchy landing and the forecast does say that it's going to be building wave wise and wind wise and here you see jeremy berlando going absolutely massive with a triple back roll mega loop board off and landing that absolutely clean so steezy yeah well spotted there ruben that was three back rolls with a board spin as well and a backhand here's hillflu going for another s loop repairing the damage on that crash I think he's going to score right here, but I can't see anything might majorly over six. It's just for the height he's getting. He'll want another 10 knots for that move, guys. But he's definitely going to get his overall impression score uh, going up with this move because it's such a critical move. Uh, and that's what it also helps to grab a smaller kite. That's why the guys are wishing for strongest wind possible because then they can ride a smaller kite, which is more maneuverable, more easily to pull off those uh, double mega loops um, and S loops. Look at that 7.58 there from Jeremy, as we saw, oh, Gil Flug there in the front. Wrapped, maybe. All I could think, I wonder what he was going for there. It, was that on the, yeah, that was right foot forwards. Well spotted, Colin. He's working the impression score here. Yeah. First one to open up some right foot forwards moves. There's three and a half minutes remaining. A lot of discussion in the last few days about the overall impression score and the importance that it has uh, played in the results that each of these riders get in this event and so on the top left hand side of your screen you can see the timer there at the bottom is the live the current live impression score so currently jeremy Belando just just edging out hill flucht with that overall impression that fourth score which will come into play towards the end of the heat or at the end of the heat when we give you the final score and the final results again it's so unfortunate that one of these boys has to go home ruben you saw the vt earlier the video we made on overall impression were you overly impressed with that Yes, mate, you always do such a good job on explaining everything into fine detail. Uh, you almost would say a bit of a job for it, but uh, hey, it's uh, what makes you perfect and uh, it's great working with you again, man. What nice work here from Jabo putting his third score on the board. And uh, let's see what the judge is saying here. Giel Vlug goes for another other double mega loop with a double back roll. He or single. Yeah, just to delay that one. But he, he makes those work, like not as high as you think you might have to be and we may have been uh, fouled to have thought it was his kite with ocean rodeo before but now he's on call he's still making those work guys 100 percent. and uh yeah you could see he was not getting the height that uh, he he normally uses oh look at that there we go with a boogie loop double and an edit rotation there for Giel Flucht. and somebody uh, sorry ruben i'm talking over here it's very rude somebody's pointed out to him on the beach your biggest score was that move do it again maybe bash another one of them in there because we can repeat the same tricks of course do you think that happened 
Yeah, of course. I mean, the riders have got some signature moves or some of some of the tricks which they can do absolute best, like 10 out of 10. But then they can definitely, uh, yeah, go bigger. Uh, so once they feel the gust, they get a better kicker. They might go for the same trick just to up the score there. Day two of the Red Bull King of the Air here. Hilflug never gone past the quarterfinals up against this man, Jeremy Berlando, who also, I don't believe, has... And here he is, though, with another nice big move. Colin, I didn't catch that move quite, looking at my scores here. Didn't, didn't either, but, I mean, this has gone off to a bang. So, ladies and gentlemen, strap into your seats. 2023 Red Bull King of the Air. Keep spreading it on hashtag Red Bull King of the Air. would love to hear from you guys. And those of you around the world have joined us. It is Gil Flucht from the Netherlands against the Italian Jeremy Belando. This is the first time Jeremy finds himself in round number three. Gil Flucht has had a semi-final finish here before in his first event in the rookie year. And last year with an, e oh, Lewis, as you mentioned, an epic heat against Liam Whaley. In fact, out of, out of the current fleet, Gil Flucht has the highest score from that heat. What front rotation, Jeremy. double front rotation, board off, contra loop, another rotation, and another one. Oi. Oh, that was sick, <laughs> just to put it bluntly. That could oh. be a devastator for Gilflug here. He'll be, Gilflug, sorry, that was big. I think that's going to push him up into first place. It will replace one of his lower scores. Remember, their three best scores out of 10 will score. Then an impression score out of 10. So it's out of 40, ladies and gentlemen, this total score. Um, and I think Belando's going to just currently nick into first. But Hill, with his double loops and S loops, Ruben, impression score might be a bit more. What do you think? 100%. I mean, he started with a double mega loop and to kick things off like that, that's definitely something the judges like to see. So I uh, think they will reward that. However, Jeremy Berlando, just at his previous takeoff, he just traveled so vertically up. He was so in control, spinning to like 15 to 20 meters. Oh, on the buzzer or after the buzzer. What was it? Gil Vlug taking off for a last move there. Uh, to the inside for his overall impression score. But to me, it seemed like he was taken off after the buzzer. So I'm not sure if the judges will take that into consideration. And that was the end of this heat. Let's look at some fine highlights right here. Gil Vleur kicking things off with a double mega loop uh, front roll. What a first heat. <laughs> I'm yeah. out of breath almost. But Jeremy, oh, definitely having the height in that heat. So it'll be very interesting to see that overall impression score as we keep talking about it. He also had a bit more variation with what he was doing with the board. I don't think we saw a board spin and some as, as technical with the board for Peel. So this will be really interesting how the judges decide which the variation helps most for the impression. But my feeling there is that I love the doubles and the S loop from Peel. So this is going to be a time. I mean, look at that control. Kite almost nice and level. Lots of extremity, which the the the, uh, the judges like. Ruben, I, I I could see Hill maybe making his way through here, but Why? I just don't know. Yeah, I think Hill did a phenomenal job here, showing some variety, uh, pushing it with the double loops and S loops. And like you say, Lewis, uh, the the riders are scored on height, and then secondly on extremity. And what makes a trick extreme is getting leveled with your kite. So. You could see in Jeremy Berlando's tricks, he was traveling very high up and, and he was looping the kite, but he was not getting really leveled with his kite. And that is really something that the judges love to see. And especially on the double mega loops, if you get leveled on those, that will uh, score fine. So there in front of your screen, I can't believe it. That is uh, the end of heat number one, but we're going to have the results dropping in for you. Oh, devastating for Gil Flucht. But look at that overall impression score. Lewis, very good point that you then made. 7.18 overall impression score. But Jeremy taking uphand, Jens, a lot of talking that can be done just on this picture alone. Yeah, I mean, I've they've scored Jeremy Blando much higher. Perhaps I've missed the move or, or something. But the different form of doubles and the S loop with Phil, I guess what they've said there is that they liked the way that Jeremy Blando was moving the board around, the board spins, the interesting, maybe the technicality of some of his moves a bit more technical. But I think Hill will feel a bit hard done by there, Ruben. For sure. I mean, Gil was giving it his all and uh, tried his harder to mix things up with doubles, with S loops, and uh, also jumping to the inside. I think that was just after the buzzer, so that might have just done, in it, done him in. But yeah, some very nice scores here in the first heat uh, for Jeremy Berlando. And uh, yeah, you can see they're just a, a point off. Um, so yeah. I, I'm interested in how many tricks they did each and how many they landed. So nine so tricks and zero crashes, uh, I think we saw there, Colin, before your screen refreshed. Was that nine and zero for hill because that was surprised me that means basically he landed every single one of his tricks nine tricks no crashes to six tricks and one crash for jeremy Belando. so that was um but i think the height gents the height is something that we're talking about here when you look at two seven point tricks from jeremy versus just one from hill fascinating those of you viewers on the website redbullkingoftheair.com 
you can scroll down, click on the results tab and scroll a little bit further down and you will see the current scores for all tricks and the live impression score on your screen. Remember to click the uh, um, follow event on the upper right hand corner, or no or yes. When you click yes, it will then follow along with the event, giving you the scores of all of the tricks on these individuals. But back to the live action as we don't have time to spare. Edgar Ulrich from France, stomping with the Megaloop KGB last week, and Steinmull from the Netherlands. Lewis, what have we got on these two gents? Oh, we've got to talk about these two, especially this man, Edgar Ulrich, who's been part of a big show in France called Love Island. Some of you might remember that in your own country. Ooh, question, la la. his focus questioned. And how about this for a response? I mean, this year he's been kiting well. He beat MJ Mark Jacobs at the Lords of Tram, one of the former King of the Air winners. He only lost to the event winner, Liam Whaley, by 0.37 in the quarters to that. He then wins Love Island, and everyone's saying, what's he doing doing Love Island? He then comes back in this and beats Andrea Principi in round one with a massive mega loop KGB. You cannot question this man's focus and dedication to kiteboarding. By 0 0.02, the lowest margin we've ever seen at the King of the Air. And here goes Steinmill kicking off his heat here at the Red Bull King of the Air 2023, day two. And is he going to land this clean? It looks like he is in full control and landing it full speed. So, uh, yeah. So, Ruben, this might be a good opportunity as we just hold for a second to see Edgar. It looks like he's going to turn around. But that trick there from Stein. Let's take a guess on the score. Let's, let's have a little bit of a banter about the guess on the score so that the viewers can also start to get a bit of a feel. I reckon 6.4, 6.3. Like, he didn't, I, didn't have that much height. Not that aggressive kite angle. I'm not going to play. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to play as yeah. much as I want, in my there, mind. There goes Edgar Ulrich, also in full control, uh, jumping to the inside for his first trick of the heat. And uh, yeah, let's see uh, what the scores are going to be like. But as you could see in the previous heat to Jeremy Berlando, who was definitely gaining some more height. And look at this, Edgar Ulrich going absolutely massive. Up, taking that look board that off, control. keeping the board off, putting it on just before the landing. And the crowd is absolutely loving it. Walking on air there, Edgar Ulrich for the Frenchman, throwing it down. Kicking his feet there like a Kentucky can-can contest. Ooh la la. <laughs> no, absolutely phenomenal riding here from both gents in the first minute of, uh, of this heat. Um, and remember, they have 10 minutes in total to put three highest scoring tricks on the board and uh, get a good overall impression score with the variety of the tricks they're doing. He's one of the names now that just gets up there, usually in and around the quarterfinals here at Steinmal. He'll want to go further. He got to the quarterfinals in Spain at the World Championships. He can mix it. I think he's quite underestimated because he's got lots of tricks both ways. He's a real genius and respects both left foot forwards and right foot forwards. He takes the ball off from the thin, which is quite hard to do. And he's very, very consistent. I'm really stoked to see him making a big name for himself in big air, riding for Cabrina. So it's Cabrina against Duotone here. And um, great call, by the, by the way, Colin. I'm glad I didn't play that game. You were point two two out. And I think, yeah, and we should say it is fun playing that game at home. And as the heats go on, you get a better and better idea. Feel, I, just the feel. I, I, didn't, like I didn't feel just yet if I could confidently say that. But point two two, two that was no, good. So you'll see on the upper left-hand side of your screen, ladies and gentlemen, are the top three scores. We're still waiting for a third score to drop in for each of these riders. As you see where it says waiting for scores, that's after they've done a trick and the scores will be loaded up onto the system. So seven and a half minutes uh, left in uh, heat number two of round number three, or to be exact, heat 14 in the total. But this is day two of the 2023 Red Bull King of the Air. Keep spreading it, guys, on hashtag King of the Air. I'm Colin Heckard. With me in the booth is Lewis Crathen and Ruben Lenton, legends of the sport. Sam Light has gone back to the OB van and will join you guys later between the semifinals and finals. Stein. Yeah. Stein Mill takes off at a double back row board off kite loop from the fin and landing it clean. Tidy. Very tidy. He's got that trick down on lockdown. How tidy. And uh, yeah, how the Red Bull King of the Air works. We have set a two week waiting period to score the absolute best conditions Cape Town has to offer. And uh, earlier this week, we were already, or last week actually, we were blessed uh, with some nice conditions to go through round one and round two. And here in round three, we are kicking things off today nicely. And uh, you're looking at Edgar Ulrich from France and Stein Mull from the Netherlands trying to uh, stay in the event. Because remember, whoever loses this heat will get knocked out and has to go home. Nice angle from the drone there of a rider riding to the left and turning around. I like it. Very good. I mean, uh, the drone definitely does give a nice dynamic and a really great... Uh, Six and a half points for the drone, boys. Was, it, was he there last night, Ruben? Of course, man. High in the sky. So Steinmull trading blows there with Edgar currently seated in first place with a 6.58, 6.18 and an identical 6.18.
Edgar should be able to drop away that one point fairly soon. Needs a 5.23 to get back into first place. But bear in mind, there is the overall impression score. Quick replay here of Stein Mull. One back row into the second back row with that board off from the fin, putting it on nicely. Oh, it's beautiful. He does that as good as anyone, I have to say. His timing and the critical moment, because that's something the judges also look at, guys. You know, they, they like to see people performing the moves of taking the board off at the critical moment when the kite is looping. He does that first back roll, then commits into it. What's he got for us now in these tricky ways, which aren't breaking towards him so much today. They're coming in from the southeast direction, which is uh, a bit harder work to time. But he just says he's, he's mugged that off. Tack abortion. He's just uh, maybe getting a bit distracted by the drone. He was looking up there. So, is that a bird? No, it's a drone. Oh, there Edgar Ulrich takes off that cross right something. over the drone. And we'll bring you that one. And uh, he looks a classic moment there from a competitor just looking over his shoulder, just thinking, what did he do? That. What did he do? Yeah. I want to know what he did. It's, sometimes you don't want to know. Sometimes you, you do want to know. Let's see. Here's a nice time in the replay. Thank you, Sam. For that It was a back roll at Mega Loop with a ball off from the handle, I think, into a second back roll there, really. Yep, that was the added rotation. And uh, as you could see in the previous shot, when Stein was riding back to the beach, it is a total vibe to see thousands of spectators standing on the beach just cheering uh, the riders on. And, uh, yeah, that just gives that extra push, that event adrenaline that you need to go absolutely next level. And here, Stein Mill goes wow. for a boogaloo board off. Rewind. Can't, can't get away with this, can you? Whoa. Oh, wow. What a belter of a move. He's and what a time to do that. Edgar had dropped a 7.72. And so we're going to uh, be very interested to see what Stein drops here. That was a replay of that. Here we move. go. So he goes in. Oh, this is uh, Edgar again. Yeah, the riders are stepping it up now, making it hard work for our replay team and us to get all this in. They're starting to work. But just going back to that move, what a timing. That was. I got Stein's move in my head, Ruben, because triple, that was big. Triple back roll, uh, contra loop board off for Edgar there, and uh, stomping it clean. He, he definitely has a, a little bit of extra vertical lift in there. He seems to be going so high. Uh, but remember, uh, if you are trying to guess the scores like us, um, the first thing you look at is the height, and then you uh, check how extreme the move really was. So did they take off the board at the critical section of the move? Uh, did they get leveled with their kite? And uh, yeah, they can kind of guess who is uh, who's doing the best. I'm surprised with the score coming in for uh, Steno, Steno there. That was same, massive. Same, yeah. He took that board off. So he actually hits the power window and gets nailed and continues to go into it. Yanked straight towards the kite in a front roll position. The board off from the fin into a double front roll mega loop. Full lit and hit in the power zone. For me, that should have been a bit higher, but hey, that's why I'm not a judge, and I sit no, in with you boys. Not a judge. I think it, it also camera angle, I think, also influences for you viewers how the, the move looks. So for now, we'll leave the scores into the more than capable hands of our head judge, Chris. Some fascinating discussions with him this morning, especially after last week. But Steinmull needing a 7.37. We've seen scores higher than that drop for today, so he definitely will be able to do it as he heads out hunting for that kicker. Just to get that extra bit of height, he will turn around and gently come back in. But uh, the Frenchman there in front of you, surprising us, actually shocking us last week with the third person ever to do a Mega Loop KGB, giving him that overall impression edge of oh, just a mere 0 0.02 against Principi. Is he setting up for it now? Ruben Lenton, two and a half minutes left. He'll know this is quite close. He's probably got an in inkling that he might be up here, but it's such a risk move. Is he thinking I might save it? What do you think, Ruben? Is he coming in with... Yep. With maybe the mindset of I'm going to be the fifth. He's going to unhook right now. I can feel it. And uh, it is a thing to unhook from your harness. No, he's not going for the unhook move. Sorry. Well, we'll never know. We just missed that. He's, a, he's landing it, and it was big. The crowd is loving it. Edgar is loving it, but he wasn't unhooked. So I'll tell you what, it might have been big, though, when he's celebrated that move. And I really want to see what that was. He was coming right foot forwards off the flats. Something happened there. And this is what the riders are doing. Like a lot of people that don't kite, uh, they might think, oh, I'm not strong enough to hold it down. Oh, here's Edgar Ulrich's replay. So he went to the right, took off his board, uh, did a loop, a mega loop, and with two, uh, two front rolls. Here's also Stein Mill jumping to the inside with a massive mega loop. Back roll board off and an added rotation. So really, really nice move. Uh, yeah, coming on, to, towards the, the beach. Inside. Yeah, good point, Ruben. They tend to work these moves on the right as the heat goes up. Great moment here of Stein speaking to his caddy, saying, look, there's one minute, 20 seconds left here. I've got you down about a point and a half, about 1.6 roughly, maybe 0.58. I have to do my quick maths. I think All he he's going to do is a massive double. Here we go. He's heading for the kicker. He's got it. Sends his oh. kite to the sky. And it's massive. A massive double front row board of contra loop. Oh, he's got thrown uh, into another one. Oy. Oh, oh, oh he's he fixed it. That is There's brilliant. 
Less than a minute left. He needs an 8.77. I don't know if he'll get... Uh, no, he won't get that, but that might give him a lower score than he needs to achieve. He's got 50 seconds left. Rookie here, Stein Mill from the Netherlands. He's still within the competition box. It'll be interesting to see. He, he knows he doesn't have time to tack back up wind. And this is where the mindset of a competitor will kick in. He'll be tempted. He'll be tempted by these waves here, Colin, thinking, oh, maybe one of these, maybe one of these. He'll have to be patient. But what a lovely shot. This, meanwhile, on the inside was an attempt at the Mega Genu... Oh, no, it wasn't. It was a back roll variation of a of board off. I think that was a backhand as well in that room. So just trying to up his variation, his impression score here, Edgar. 15 seconds left. One more move. For yep. Stein, it's going to be left and forward. An 8.42 drops for Stein Mill. We've got 10 seconds what? left. Can he get that 6.83? We do have the overall impression score that does come into play as well. How is that even possible oh, the, for the 8.42? 8.42, the first ah. time. Oh, on the buzzer. He wanted to unhook and he just... Oh, what a contrary. I think he, I think Edgar's taken off in time here. Oh. I, I think this is a decent move at a good time for Edgar. In my head, he took he was in the air before we were all watching Stein thinking he's gonna throw a handle pass. Lovely move there. It's a contra I don't think it was at the most critical time, but the height that it's a big move that guys. I think that might be enough for him. Triple, Look at the time. Triple front roll, board off contra loop here from uh, Edgar Ulrich and here taking off again with a double back roll board off contra loop. He's got those contra loops on lockdown. They're getting excited on the beat. You hearing some of these screams on I the mean, beat? Here? It here, this time. was Stein Mills' rewind. So he went into a, a front roll with a border from the fin, and then he actually got accidentally flipped backwards. So he rewind. Spock actually was a rewind for once. Sorry about <laughs> that last time. <laughs> no problem. But Lewis. wow, the end of heat number two here in round three. Oh, what a what a sensational oh. display, James, of bigger cardboarding. The Ruben, level you like that, Ruben. The angle. Yeah, I, I'm not such a massive fan of control loops, but if it's done right, he absolutely went massive and he got yeah angled with his kite, so that was great. High level heat here, guys. We had lots of landings here. Crash count zero for Stein. Crash count zero for Edgar. Edgar got eight moves in to Stein uh, Stein Miles six um, to be to be confirmed. I'm being told, but I think that's pretty legit. So we are waiting, and that moment as a rider as well. It's such a awful moment, especially when you know you've had a close heat and like, please tell me. Please tell me I've gone through. Please. But this even for us, Lewis, here in the booth, it's like this uncertainty already at the scores. For It just shows the margins this year already at just how close these riders are to each other. This is not a case of rookies and we know who's going to win and who's not. This is anybody's game. I wonder if it's the same for you, riders. You've got plenty of riders in for the Netherlands. You've got plenty of riders in from South Africa. We've got one usually from the UK. I wonder if it's as intense for you when you're like, oh, please, can we be still in? Please, England still in. I mean, we've got some good stats about number of appearances, but Ruben... This is that moment for the rider. There is Stein, your compadre. Yeah. Look at his caddy, who's got his eyes on his oh. phone, looking into, unfortunately, what we see on our screens in front of us. Edgar Ulrich edges out st the rookie Stein Mill with a very impressive 7.56 overall impression score. But Edgar, even though Stein had the highest individual trick score with an eight, epic 8.42, Edgar sees himself through to his first ever Red Bull King there fi semi-final. Yeah, Colin, can you pull up that uh, that highest scoring trick for Stein? I just want to check which move it actually was. Um, I mean, it was, I think, the belter of a contra loop that he did. Contra loop, front roll, times three, board off, yeah. as per the way Red Bull King, uh, King of the Air.com website. It was pretty sick. And remember, people, the contra loop is done with the front hand and the mega loop is done with the backhand. So it gives a different kind of uh, yeah lift, power. Uh, it's a total different maneuver. He'll feel great here, Edgar. This has been coming for this rider. Like I said, he's been so close this year. He knows how to beat Mark Jacobs, a former winner. Lost to the event winner, Lord of Tram, by 0 0.37. And uh, he won Love Island. He knows how to win things, let's be, let's be honest. And he loves kite surfing, so, you know. Love is in the air. Oh. That, should be, that should be the name of his new brand. I mean, that's just, make but sure you sell that. Really. Oh, man, but round three, heat 15, the third heat for today and uh, there we go one of the local boys Jason van der Spey finding himself with his first ever round three appearance along with rookie Josue Ferreira from Brazil also first time in round three obviously because he's a rookie but uh, youngest and lightest competitor at the two and uh, Jos Josue showing some really solid performances up until round three yeah he's on the scene he's you now he's had to beat Aaron he's beaten Coan before at the Lords of Tram in the quarters so he beat Aaron in Spain as I mentioned and he smashed last year's semi-finalist Beto in this uh, in this round two here but here this man Jason van der Spy 
feel like it's going to be time for him soon. One man he won't want to come against is Liam Whaley here because he's lost three times to him this year. Lords of Tram round three, Spain round three, Megaloop, Red Bull Megaloop. He lost by 0 0.18 and Liam put him out there as well. But he's not against him and won't be against him now. This could be his time. He's beaten Jamie, he's beaten Aaron. And oh, that is not the start, unfortunately. That's a cockroach there by Joshua. That was not a board off. <laughs> solid board off there, leaving it behind him. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately there for Joshua, not the start he wanted. However, he did have a shaky start against Aaron Hadlow at the GKA, suffering a big crash, and then came back to win that heat at the GKA could Tarifa Lewis. That was some epic display of big air kiteboarding. So we know he's got what it takes to perform on this platform. Yeah, and just looking at this start, you've got two riders, I would say, not that experienced in this event. Jason Finn in here, actually, he's had a go in 2018. Still a young rider, I guess. Just look at the way he started this heat. He's not been rushed into a wave to go off anything. The sets obviously didn't look that good, and Josie went for it. And I like the patience and uh, maturity here shown by Jason Venice, but he's not being forced into his trip. He might even go right foot forwards with it got to be careful but he's, he's already a minute in and most riders would have loved to have got you know their first trick in so far but he's calm about it he's like, i like it i really uh, appreciate the maturity that he's showing here you know this uh, this morning having a chat with him super excited to be in round three finally overcoming that uh, round two curse that he had but here we go back roll mega loop board off nice nose grab on the way down clean nice and clean good start there should be in the six point range there for jason fundus bay at a significant height there, and what a style, what a calmness. Uh, yeah, he absolutely nailed that move. And Jason van der Spau, obviously also known for his signature short line mega loops. Uh, so he grabs shorter lines, and the kite really gets below him and just creates some mind-blowing maneuvers with that. It was interesting there, just using the kite right in. I'd like to see that in the while, if we can, when we can as well, because we know there's a lot going on in the water, and it's Sam Light doing that hard work in there, in the, the OB van, making sure it's the right time i think we're safe here to perhaps show us but they're about to turn around these riders that's how it works guys um, the riders cannot actually just fly away like that just by pressing a button or sending the kite up it's all about building up the tension like he etches against the wind steers the kite in the air and then he can do moves like this oh mark jacobs was the only one to do that same trick last week triple front roll rotation before yanking on that bar for the contra loop there by joshua yeah, oh, they, epic. Oh, thanks for the replay, guys, in the van. Yeah. That was excellent. Could, we could hear the crowds actually cheering for that trick here through the through the bar commentary box. As in front of you there, Jason van der Spey popping over that kicker. Here we go. Great. Building up some speed. Does he see something at the back? Nope. The ocean just flattened out on him. And then it's a good thing to just turn around and try again. Sometimes the waves just don't line up or you don't feel the right power in your kite because the wind has a kind of low in it or you just don't feel the gust. They just turn around, keep your head cool, and try again. You speed out into the sea, maintaining your speed by hopping over the waves and then perfectly timing the this next big kicker like Jason van der Spy sending himself into a double front roll board of Mega Loop and an added rotation. So that's three forward rotations with a board off whilst looping his kite. Ruben, that was wonderful timing. For a second there, I thought, why is he turned around? I'm not sure if there was something. He saw something there as a local rider. And he turned around and he saw it and he stuck to it because the best riders here, they never miss waves. They always seem to find them. how often you can be out there even and think, wow, how lucky is that guy? They make their own luck. Exactly. And they do that by reading the playground super well. They're looking far ahead. They're reading the waves, which often come in a, a sets of three or maybe even four. They're hopping over the first few and then catching the biggest one. Oh, we saw that trick from him on the drone, but Joshua there, Megalu played back roll. Nice rotation way down, but look there, a 6.96 dropping for Jason on that previous move. Obviously, with the drone footage, we didn't quite get the feeling of the height, but that horizontal travel distance that he had was ridiculous. So great. Oh, this has been a, a slow start to this heat. Also, uh, Ruben, you mentioned about the sets. Sets sometimes take 10 to 15 minutes before they come in. Could be one of the reasons why we're seeing such a slow start here, but uh, Jason cementing himself so far. Nicely in first place with two solid scores. Joshua, as we wait for that score of his to drop, needs a 7.85. I don't think he's done anything on a 7.85 just yet, but still plenty of time. Another big move with that beautiful shot there pulling out. We see the mountain in the background. I'm not even going to guess what that was. Oh, he sticks it in the drink. So the first wobble from one of our riders here, Ruben Linton. It's not that cold. I've been out there today in a shorty. Those of you told it's cold in Cape Town. Who brings a shorty to Cape Town? I bring three wetsuits, so I have a dry one all the time. And somebody that's got to rush back in here quickly, Ruben, that's who does that. Shorty, okay, mate.
I mean, I could should wear a shorty and longer bomb, but this water is quite freezing, man. You see them all wearing full suits, staying yeah, warm. I'd say, uh, but you're from England, right? I'd say you're a bit sensitive. <laughs> yeah, I'm Josh really sensitive. Pereira heading out to Robin Island. It looks like something. It's a bit of a flat one. Yep, he throws down the hammer, plucks on the backhand, launches off the kicker, fully extending his legs, double front rotation, triple front rotation, boogie Qu loop. Quadruple. Oh, four rotations. Oh, and oh, excellent. That should. I loved it. That was brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant. Same like last week, just showing full control of his takeoff. She loved that. He she, loved that. She Colin, absolutely. You? Who was? Everybody who was, loving it. They loved it. it. They loved it. Everyone. I was loving it. But especially the crowd on the beach. Like watching this on the live stream is awesome. But watching this live in front of your eyes with your scent or with your toes in the sand and just feeling the wind and just seeing all this action right in front of your eyes is just next level. So uh, maybe next year, if, you, uh, if you're up for an epic adventure, come down to Cape Town and uh, taste the salty wind. Oh, Joshua Forever has quickly flipped the script there on Jason, moving into first place. Currently, the overall impression, if I look on the, on the Red Bull website, Joshua does have a slight advantage on the overall impression score. Very close. Jason needs a 5.69, which we all know he can easily achieve, as we see uh, Joshua's kite heading out towards Robben Island. Have these guys got the the handle passes in the in the bag? I've seen Jason van der Spy yeah. actually unhook before, so this could definitely up his impression score. JVD JD, sorry, yeah, JVDS. I thought it was just JVD, but all right, it's probably JVD. There's a great shot of the live impression. Pereira really working his way back into this heat. Then I think not from. I mean, we had that big crash actually from van der Spy, but more just he hasn't got anything on the board for a while. You know, the, the judges start to feel like the. the Things are going down for this Well, ride. I mean, Jason has only two top scores. He has yet to do a third a third trick. As you'll see, it's a zero on his third third trick on the upper left-hand corner. Just over three minutes left in this heat. Oh, what a night. What a what an epic battle here with both of these riders. First time in round three. Jason heads out to sea. Early takeoff on the kicker. Delays on the loop. Triple back row. Mega loop with the board off here as well. This is a big score from... Jason van der Spray, and I think he's going to go into first place with this move. Very calm, very collected. What are these riders going to do now to try and show the judges some impression? Because I see this quite tight. Oh, there goes Baby Shark. Joshua not getting the height he was hoping for, but still squeezing in the mega loop and four rotations. <laughs> Great Just awareness. Keep, keeping, it, keeping it going may, might help towards the overall impression, but I don't think he will remove any of his top three scores. There was no board off. There was, no extremity, there was not as that much extremity in that maneuver. But Jason van der Spey there in the front on the Eros lift kite, the kite that he's involved with in developing and pushing the progression of the sport. So great to see all the brands jumping on board, pushing the discipline of big air. Yep, Jason van der Spey has moved into first place. Nice call there, Lewis. You wow. saw that coming. Well, did you know the big thing here, boys, is that he hasn't done that much, though, Jason van der Spey. He's only got three tricks counting so far to nearly double that from Joshua. So you'd have to imagine that he's going to win on the impressions at this moment, but there's one and a half points splitting them. This is going to be really tight unless someone goes out there and goes, right, big handle pass, big double. I think Van der Spey's got a double in him, you know, guys. He has got a double in him. And, you know, last year, for example, Jason and Cohen Van Dijk were the only two riders to do a handle pass in the King of the Air event. This year, we've seen a couple more guys throw that trick out of the bag as, as they have all seen, and we have seen it influence the overall impression score. Great shot there from the drone, just gently showing. You can see Joshua just tacking his way back towards the upper area of the competition box. Jason is looking to unhook, I believe. And I mean, why wouldn't the riders unhook? They know it scores well, uh, definitely with the overall impression score, but it's, it's just so heavy. These guys are riding big air kites, very powerful kites. And here a nice uh, back roll uh, mega loop with a board off from uh, Joshua and a one footer added in there at the last second for extra style points. So here we go with a little replay from Jason's move on the inside. So he goes with a front roll board of contra loop and an added rotation right in front of the spectators by the beach and landing it clean. But yeah, why wouldn't the riders do a handle pass if they know that it scores well? Because it is super heavy. They're riding uh, big air kites, which just keep pulling and to unhook on the power of your arms is just, uh, yeah, another risk factor, which here, here we go. He goes for a Kung Fu handle pass. Not high enough to get a big score, single score, but it will infect. I mean, you could just almost imagine that's going to up his impression score by 0.5 or 1 or something like exactly. that, Ruben. And but with the margins that we've been seeing, Lewis, sorry to interrupt you, with the margins we've been seeing, that's no irrelevant amount of points. 
I don't know if it's going to be enough to jump that, but just I just keep going back. Oh no, he's got his trick count up a bit now. Jason there goes Daniels Joshua play. and another double back roll, fully extended board off, quadruple back roll again, and landing that clean. What a landing! Could that be the difference? There is the end of heat number 15. I wouldn't want to call this one because there's not much in it, as uh, been brought a pen. Well, that signal was actually right to us if you want to give us a signal, but now I've been brought a pen, so <laughs> maybe I can write something. <laughs> hats, hats off to the team. Wow, what a heat. We had a bit of a slow start, but both riders adapted to the conditions. But here's the highlights now from heat number 15, round three. Uh, Ruben, talk us through some of these highlights, man. Well, the lights are high, and uh, here is uh, Jason, no, uh, Baby Shark. Spinning four times, man. That I light, get dizzy. That, that light dizzy you in. Someone's it. turned a blinding light on in here, and you're not happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> and here, uh, Jason van der Spy on his signature triple, quadruple back roll board off Mega Loop. Absolutely super steezy. The guys have got full control, extending at the critical section of their move. And here, he spins forward, takes off the board, and also looping that kite, contra looping the kite with his front hand. So here he goes up, back roll, he's pulling the kite with his back hand whilst rotating and putting the board off uh, with his front hand. So some uh, phenomenal phenomenal riding here in the round number three here at the Red Bull King of the Air 2023, day two. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, we are just waiting for the results to pop in. And uh, ooh, these are the results from the previous heat. So uh, let's wait until we get the correct graphic with the right scores on the board. Uh, therefore, a Baby Shark against uh, Jason van der Spuy. One of these lads has to go home and one advances straight to the semi-finals. Semi-final time. Wow. It's, uh, it's coming up on us fast here. Yeah, it is. Oh, he did it. Oh, he did. He did it. Jason van der Spuy then taking it. Caught by qu qu quite a big... And there's a very happy oh. Colin. I'm not going to say your surnames. I can't do it. Ruben, do you want to do it? You can do it, apparently. Hekrood. I am excited. Jason van der Spey not only had his first round three appearance, but sees himself through to his first ever King of the Air semi-final. Excellent stuff. The last semi-finalist from South Africa was Joshua Emmanuel back uh, two years ago. But what an effort from Baby Shark. You've got to hand it to him, James. What, that was an excellent heat. Baby Shark having the highest individual trick score in that heat. I mean, definitely a dream come true for him. He came all the way from Brazil, got his spot in because uh, I think a rider was uh, injured. So he was on the reserve list and uh, made his way into the event. And uh, yeah, I think he got some great experience from this event and he, yeah, it only makes him hungry for, for next time. So he will keep on training, keep on enjoying this beautiful sport. and. Uh, yeah, great to have him here on the scene. Lovely scenes down there, though. He'll be so happy. He's made it into the top four here. Can he go all the way? But this next heat, I really do want to talk about. It's major, the next heat, number 16, as we see Jason van der Spey on there. Um, being the relate, It's going to be so relaxed now that maybe he's now just got that feeling. Do you know what? I don't mind. I've got well, further he, than I've ever got. You he, know. he said this morning, Lewis, he's not stopping until the final. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to fall to complacency. But uh, Lewis, lead us into heat number 16. Huge heat, then. These two, Mark Jacobs, former King of the Air winner, against Jamie Overbeek. Let me read out some stuff for you guys here. They are one and one. One win each to their name for 2023. Mark winning in Spain by 0 0.59 against him at the World Championships. Jamie Overbeek done him over at the Red Bull Megaloop, winning by 0 0.34. So they were 1-1, one, one, but Jamie Overbeek beat him last year. He's got his 100% record against Mark at the Red Bull King of the Air. Mark Jacobs hasn't had the best year so far, but uh, take a look at that. Interesting. Uh, did Ruben, who, who's made these things here? Tell me what these are about. Yeah, I think all these riders got some great stats on them. I mean, we've got the best kiteboarders in the world in extreme big air kiteboarding here at the Red Bull King of the Air. A fine selection. And there you could just see their stats. And you could obviously see that Jamie has got yeah, the height advantage, which the judges are absolutely loving. The crowd is loving it. And this is the Red Bull King of the Air, where it's all about height and extremity. And J uh, Jamie Overbeek, he's got some, uh, some yeah, world records to his name, jumping 35 plus meters. And he's got all the tricks in the bag and sticking his first one clean. That will give him some nice confidence to continue taking on Mark Jacobs, former Red Bull King of the Air. One rider with a lot of aggression and one rider with a lot of height. Jamie Overbeek has the ability to go high of pretty much nothing <laughs> at, in, in any big air uh, um, weather conditions. 
So it's going to be interesting to see the difference in these scores, James, between these two uniquely different styles of riding. 100%. And Jamie Overbeck, I think he rides the most amount of hours on the water. This guy is a, a kiteboarding machine. Thousands and thousands of hours are going into this. And uh, Mark Jacobs has got some unique tricks as well. Uh, he used to do all his tricks coming to the ride, but then learned everything switch so he could uh, perform better at the Red Bull King of the Air. So he's one of the most complete riders. And here he is sticking a nice double mega loop. Uh, with the front row, I believe. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it was Ruben. I don't know if he's going to get scored major, major there. Just again, a wave just broke on him a little bit. The spray coming out. That's why we saw him just land that. But yeah, there's history between these two. It's going to be and exciting. between us. Well, of course, not much history, but we haven't Lucky got time, time for that. Have we? I love you too. But um, J Jamie Overbeek here, after that wonderful podium finish last year, maybe he didn't have the year everyone was expecting, only making it to the semi-finals in Spain and Lords of Tram. But here he goes, off the wave, into a contra loop, double front roll, most likely a triple roll, front roll, with a board off as well, and he's just had a bit of a butt check, Ruben. Ah, he just crashed on that one, and the judges definitely don't like that. I mean, a small butt check can be uh, deducted some small points, but this was a proper butt check, so I don't think... Uh, he will score anything for that. But it was a quadruple front roll, contra loop, board, board off with a board spin. Here's so. a quick replay of Mark. Double front rotation, uh, inverting uh, on there. That was the, the doobie, doobie, double. Doobie, doobie booby, I believe it's called. Oh, sometimes. the booby yeah. loop is back. Yeah. Uh, there was no board off in that. No, no what, need. What are you talking about? The Otherwise, it will be a booby loop. That was just a replay. Off. Interesting replay for me that actually showed he wasn't that high no. in that move. I don't think he connected like he would have done. He rides out now. This doesn't look good for waves. No, and he turns around right foot forwards. He has managed to get the highest impression score so far in the early rounds, a 6.82, because he landed 10 trips, more than anyone, didn't crash at all, and they had lots of impressions. So he'd be banking on doing some right foot forward moves here as well. But I think he's uh, not going to go there. That would be very dangerous. How often kite boarders do that right near the beach and go up the beach? Yeah, I the think... drone go down there, Colin. <laughs> Get in the no, water. No, 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 no. Oh, no. I really hope for the crew's sake that drone didn't take a tank. But uh, back to the action here as we have just over seven minutes left. These are 10-minute heats, two-man two heats here. It'll be two-man heats until we get to the, sem uh, the finals where it'll be back to three. No more flag-out sequence. But there in front of you, Jamie Overbeck with the iconic Devil's Peak looming large in the back. Last week, we didn't have the table clock, the, the table clock this week we do. Here you see uh, Mark Jacobs just did not get the height double, on that trick. Now. That was a double with a back roll there. I got a drone to the face once, Ruben. It looks like it. But no, he didn't land that one clean. Uh, so that was a bummer for uh, for Mark Jacobs. He wasn't getting the height because the wave just closed on him. So yeah, it, uh, disrupted his uh, his airtime. Interestingly enough, yeah, when you look on the actual results on the Red Bull King of the Air.com webpage, it doesn't indicate that Mark Jacobs had a crash. Um, he did have a butt check. So gents, landings. This is an important discussion for the viewers. Difference between landing, butt check, and crashing and hand check. I think it's clear. You can just tell when a rider rides away. Oh, this is big, though. Back rolls with the ball. Triple, oh, he's a tornado. Oh. There's a butt check. He must get oh, so oh. frustrated with that. It sucks so bad when you just have the perfect trick laid out and you just mess it up in the end and your kite is at the wrong position. Maybe you get hit by a wave. It happens all the time to you, doesn't it? Yeah, mate. That's my signature move. Crashers. Big move. Mark Jacobs turning the screw then on Jamie over a bit here in the quarterfinals of the Red Bull King of the Air in Cape Town. I'm Lewis Crathen, Ruben Lenton next to me to my right, to my left, Colin Hechroot. I'll try, I'll try my best, Colin. But it's getting exciting here, lads, in these early heats. All right, no thanks, gents. It is so good to be with you all here. But uh, let's run down uh, for an interview on the beach with one of the athletes who's uh, competed down round number three. Jason van der Spey, local boy. Making it through to the semi-finals. Well done, my boy. How are you feeling? Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Super stoked. Super stoked. I missed my board on one of the one of the key tricks and had a lot of body dragging. Uh, I managed to get my second board, but managed to pull it together. So stoked. Well done, bro. I can't wait to see what you got for us in the semis. And, uh, you know, I hope you make it through to the finals. Oh, thank you, bro. Thank you. It's a dream come true. I think it's the first South African in the semis ever, if I'm not mistaken. So hopefully Luca gets there and then we're through to the finals. Yes, boy. Let's see it. Cheers. Cheers, bro. Thank you so much. Don't worry, I'll have a discussion with Jason afterwards. We've had a South African in the final before and in the semi-finals, but uh, this would be the first in a while, so epic stuff Mark, from him. Who? Thought we were going to see something else there. Look, at, look at the score that has dropped for Mark Jacobs, a 7.14 with a strong dominant performance so far over Jamie Overby, but Jamie's Connecting. not done. Biggie. 
flying over the horizon, was there clearing a the boat. There? Was there a tic tac there, Ruben, or did I see things? You're, al you're always seeing things, mate. A tic tac is when the riders grab it by the fin and then sw swing it around to oh, the Oh, what handle. do we have here from Mark oh, Jacobs? Double back crawl board off Mega Loop on the inside from him, but big butt check for him. He hasn't had the heat that he's had before, but it's the trick on the outside. We want to see from Jamie Overby because I think Ruben, I fe he had his hand on the handle at the end and he started off on the rail, I believe. So that is why I'm thinking it was a tic tac. A good eye, good eye. You're, well, let's you're see. sharp today, mate. Let's see who's. But look at that 7.22 dropped for Jamie Overby on that last trick of his going out. Mark Jacobs yanking on that back bar. He's no, not going not that high, but what he, is he doing? He is doing double mega loops, but not that high, but still pulling the kite around, which is impressive. But uh, yeah, here it's all about height and extremity. And this was not that high. It was also not that extreme, but it was pretty technical. Boys, with this one's all over the place. Three minutes and a half left here. We've got Jamie Overbeek hasn't even got three scores on there. Only four tricks landed for Mark Jacobs. These two, there's a lot of pressure. I said there was tension between these two before. Mark Jacobs representing the old guard. He was going to turn around and go right foot forwards, I think, for sure. Maybe go for maybe 360 handle pass might be a good shout oh, here, Ruben. For the overall impression, he's already ahead on over impression. But Jamie, again, under pressure Double this time. Double front row, contra loop. Triple front rotation, board off, grabbing it by the fin. Tic tac. Tic -tac. Nice. <laughs> Sticking nice that tactic, amazing. the old tic tac. I would love a little replay on that Big if we could see uh, Jamie taking it off uh, through the skies there. It was uh, absolutely phenomenal riding. It's going it, to be close now, it guys. It just would be really nice to see Jamie just get that kite a little bit lower. If he gets that kite a little bit lower, I think it'll really help his score. I think he's got the height, though. Like we said at the start, he had the height on that. He's been going over the horizon. This is going to be neck and neck now, boys. Cool. Wow. Point one four in this one with two and a half minutes left of heat number 16. And the overall impression is neck and neck as well. Boys, we're going to have another tight heat. Like I reminded you, two of the heats they've had this year separated between less than 0 0.6. Each of these guys, podium finishes over the last two years. Mark Jacobs, champion here in 2021, winning on his birthday. There in front of you, coming but in right foot, right foot. Oh, it looked like he wanted a yank on the bar there for something. But Jamie Overbeck, not only being the youngest competitor ever yet, last year to enter into the king of the year, a king of the air, but stormed to a second place podium finish. So, wow, a lot of talent, both old and young, I want to say, in this heat. It's got to go handle pass here. Exactly, that's what I was just going to say. All Mark needs to do is to unhook and throw a massive handle pass in there because I have never seen Jamie unhook. He is the air style, the, 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 yeah, the air master, the big air master, but I haven't seen him unhook. And, um, yeah, let's see if Mark uh, has got that feeling. It's tough here, though. He hasn't got flat sections. It's look a bit different from here on this angle, but surely he's not going to send it in there. He's going left foot forwards again. I wonder, has he got time? This is, this is tense. A minute and a half left. Jamie just keeping it in first gear until he spots a kicker, but it looks like a bit of a lull in the wind, gents. Oh, not the lull again. I don't like those things. Yeah, a bit glassy. Oh, there goes Jamie Overbeck on his vortex. I think he's got to land this. He has landed it. And I say that, boys, because he'd only had uh, three tricks that were counting so far to Mark Jacobs' five. It's not all about how much you do, but that definitely influences the impression score simply because you've got more things to impress the judges with. 100%. And we could just hear the crowd cheering them on and praying for them. They're, I just heard, landed. They're really supporting the riders to do their best. And uh, also, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the live stream of the Red Bull King of the Air 2023. You're here with me, Ruben Lenton, and I'm in the booth together with Colin Heckroot and Lewis Crathern, of course. Oh, man. Mark Jacobs, inverted front rotation, double boogie loop. Oh, and sticking it like, um, oh, like wow. a brick I know, into I know the water. that landing better than anyone. That what? was the backside block side oh, to the head. He really went for that. I didn't think, as soon as he committed to that double, it. I hope he's all right there. I think he's just getting his body. He can take anything, that man. But James, 20 confident. seconds left. He needs a 7.21 as far as the top three uh, tricks is concerned. Oh, is James is going to jump to the inside, and he's going forward once, forward twice. No way. No. Sticks this. No way. Over. No way. No way. Oh, butt check it. Yeah, ooh, that sealed the deal for him, I think. I think he's going to get scored for that. And more importantly, it brings his trick count up quite similar. I think Mark Jacobs absolutely went for broke with that big move. That is the end of the Did heat. we just miss one of Mark coming there Mark to the inside? Or what's he done? There. He, no, he took off there towards the inside. We should get a replay of that. But that is the end of the heat. Wow, As guys. we await a replay and highlights from the, what an epic heat. Right. Was on the edge of seat, yeah, here was the replay. Yanked on the oh. back of the bar. Gents. Oh, crashed that one. Uh, this is going to be very interesting. I don't know if Mark has got enough. Was he riding an 8-meter or a 9-meter orbit? I 
he probably double both. I'd be surprised if he's on nine. If yeah, me green. too. But I just I thought I just saw a little uh, number James, on the card there. Was, there. That was very there was definitely a, a, a lull in the wind there. So highlights from that heat. Double four with a double mega loop. Yeah, that here. was early on. He had that quite nicely. I don't think we saw Jamie with a double. No. So. But here, Mark wasn't going that high, but he still pulled off the doubles, uh, as you can see here. I oh, wouldn't want to call this one, guys. This is tough. Definitely, we can yeah, say that height. Jamie had the height. But that's what the judges love, bro. Yeah, they do love that. But do they love the height? It's got to be with the impression score. It isn't just about the height. It's left. I think Mark Jacobs really needed a handle pass here. Yeah. This man really got into gear at the end. His yeah. board offs and control was just wonderful at the end. If he had a kite that was more meant for double mega loops, that might not have worked in his favor if this wind had dropped through the middle of the heat you definitely could see some clear patches in between the waves indicate this happens this is my this is the this is the the hand that is dealt to you the wind can increase the wind can drop it happens so well, we'll anxiously await the the scores but um, 0.44 separates their heat score so it'll be all down to the impression score here will they go for mark jacobs both of the riders crashing a lot and not so many tricks like we used to see from them six tricks and three crashes for mark jacobs five tricks and two crashes for Jamie Overbeek. So and if you look at the nature of the crashes from Mark Jacobs, it definitely indicated him being slightly underpowered than what he would have wanted to be. Yeah, simply more wind and he would have landed those ones. But you've got to adapt to the conditions. There's doubles going straight in here, practicing doubles warms up, warm ups there from Lorenzo. So we are waiting the tension big to find out if the saga between the only man from Oceania down in New Zealand representing that area, Mark Jacobs and Jamie Overberg, who used to get into the final here. He's done it before. How's it going to go? Is it going to be 2-1 Mark or 2-1 Jamie this yeah, year? Boys, no. come on. Let's no, have a guess. It's, it's, uh, uh, my money's on Jamie, yep. gents. I think uh, he just had the height. We saw what the judges have been rewarding in terms of height. But yeah, this is tense. Will Mark Jacobs see himself through to his third semi-final? Will Jamie Overberg find himself? In his second semi-final, we will know now. And Boom! Yes, Jamie Overbeck are taking it. Uh, Jamie Overbeck is taking the win here over Mark Jacobs. He must be devastated. But Jamie Overbeck, rookie on the scene, well-deserved with phenomenal riding. And uh, I hope he can find his groove a wow. little better with, uh, with the crashes he had in this The heat. second youngest rider in the fleet today, knocking out the second oldest rider in the fleet today. Wow, upsetting for Mark, but uh, a great performance. And we were informed here by our director that the judges had a lot of talk around this heat, so they're not rushing it. We've actually now got four-minute breaks instead of three between each of these heats, giving the judges even more time than before to uh, get give out the most fair result. But no time to waste as we head into heat 17. Ruben. So here we got the also South African Luca Ceruti, who has been riding competitions uh, for a couple years, and he's been loving it. Uh, he's definitely going to give it his all because he's up against Andrea Principi, uh, the, yeah, the current uh, big air uh, world, world champion. champion. Yeah, Luke has really found his groove here at this event. Um, he's doing really well riding great 10 tricks he got in his first heat, actually. No, not many crashes at all, so he's very looking good. And he'll need to be against Andrea Principi, who is absolutely dominating big air at the moment. He's won the world championships in Spain. He won the Red Bull Mega Loop just now. He is only placed not first in only three heats so far. This year, two of them with, with Liam Whaley, and he's not here. Only Edgar Ulrich has beaten him so other than that. So statistically, Lewis, Andrea definitely has the upper hand here. Although, Lucas Rudy, a second place finish at full power Tarifa against Jeremy Belanda. Yeah, I think so. I don't class that as such as big as these other events these days um, with, the, with the fleet. But that said, Luca Taruti is mixing it with the big boys. He's actually working quite well for him north now. He's really got in tune with it so you just, i mean the money would be on andrea principi but he knows these conditions and we've been all talking about in here oh it looks a bit glassy ruben you're staring desperately to find the kite size yeah, of these riders because it should it feels like it should be big now yep they are riding on eight meter kites uh, there lucas caruti is riding the north orbit and uh, we got andrea principi on his uh, duotone uh, evo Kana. and that's an aaron hadline ruben lenton special into a closeout <laughs> very good example of how the kicker can just quickly close out on you. Maybe a local, a bit bit more time at this event. But uh, oh. Lucas Cerruti launching off a foam ball, a not even waiting for a proper ramp. I think it was a proper ramp. He just got in there before that bombed out. That timing was unreal. Gets the maximum blowout on the top of that wave. But then this man oh, also yeah. finds it. Look at that extension on that front roll. Maneuver there with the board off. That's a better start from Andre Pinchipi with the Michael Jackson look away. First founded by Alvaro on the Ava. <laughs> 
<laughs> what a stat, Lou. Uh, that was absolutely a phenomenal kickoff by these boys. Uh, Luca Ceruti here is a master at taking off of these. He just hit a bit of whitewash. He dove forward. He grabbed the board off by the tail, whipped it around for the tic tac. What a. Oh, oh. I was going to say, what a landing, oh. and that piece of chop just threw him off his rail. That would have scored big if he had stuck there, but you've got to negotiate that landing. It's not flat oh. surface. Andrea launching to the skies. Liking the power on these contra loops. He's pulling that early, oh. Ruben, and getting that down, but chop from the devil from Luca Taruti takes him out. So there you so can see. So Lewis, you can see on the nicker of that kicker. Nice replay there from Luca Taruti. Great takeoff. Great takeoff. Love it. All the time in the world, extending the legs before he puts the board back on. I hope you viewers are appreciating the skill that's going on down here. These riders putting their bodies on the line, all for your pleasure and entertainment, but hopefully, more importantly, for your inspiration as you see people knocking off work filling in here on the sand so much space oh what an iconic location but to andrea dropping a 7.34 doom oh man wow look at the irony chop from the devil taking out luca turuti but it's 666 six, six <laughs> for his first, <laughs> first move there Are you kidding me interesting how everybody oh. recognizes that number but here's a quick replay from andrea right, uh, right foot forward front oh. loop front roll Board spin. Wow, look at that control. If he sticks oh. this, this is a replay, by the way, at home. He's working inside and out. He's in the rhythm, guys. He's done way more tricks already than Luca. Three, to my knowledge, here. Landed them all. Luca's got a lot to do here to beat the current world champion and double two times world champion. And the king of the air is the one he'll want, guys. Got 100%. up to the final. He got third. Everyone wasn't expecting that last year. He'll want to go all the way here. And you know, Luca, being from South Africa, he's been riding here. This is, uh, yeah, it's his home stomping grounds. And uh, what we've seen earlier this year in the Red Bull Megaloop event in the Netherlands is that Andrea Principi also conquered the Dutch storm with such a precision, such a talent and such a technical moves. But here, look at the height that Luca Ceruti is getting here. Lovely replay there with a double oh. back roll oh, with a mega loop and a board off from the fin, I think, as well. Nice. James, that's definitely one of the highest I've seen with right foot forward. Yeah, I agree. It was almost on the beach there. Camera like angle. a beached whale. <laughs> like the riders are jumping between 15 and 20 meters height, um, whereas the world record is now around 36 meters, and uh, we're pushing for the 40 meters. And that's why all the brands are putting more and more money into, develop into the development of uh, all the gear. Uh, definitely experimenting with lighter materials, stiffer materials, more durable materials, hopefully. And uh, yeah, the riders uh, can fly higher to the sky with that. So it's great to see them performing here to the max. And they're right here in front of Table Mountain. Oh, both riders in the air simultaneously. Luca not able to perform what he wanted to. It would be nice to get a replay there of Andrea at the back. But uh, Luca having his work cut out for him here with just five and a half minutes left, needing a 7.63 to edge his way through into first place. But here, yeah, replay of Andrea. Going forward, taking off the board with his front hand, pulling the Megaloo with his backhand, and adding a rodeo, I that believe. That is a rodeo, I believe, yeah, gents. Big, big chat about that on the beach um, previously. We were just talking about Ruben. You hinted on the world record there. And we have devices that are on the board sometimes. You've actually got a few of them out there. Jason van der Spy getting a 23.5 meter jump, as we see that replay of the contra loop. Um, board off maneuver there from uh, Luca, but riders, you just imagine that these riders are only jumping 23.5. It might look big to you, but uh, the world record, the Wu world record, is currently up about 36. So you can imagine how windy it needs to be to go that high. I think some other riders have got that on their board, and we'll bring that to you. Baby Shark, only 19.7, about 20 meters. These riders are jumping. 100%, and uh, yeah, that's what you want. The more wind, uh, the higher the tricks, the more critical they can get. And look at Andrea Principi just. Coming to the inside, taking off the board, uh, sticking out his legs in front of him for some extra steez point. Oh, with a rewind. And uh, landing, the way down. landing that clean. And uh, the vibes are definitely building here on the beach with lots of spectators uh, checking out all the action live. And don't forget to share this live stream with your friends so they can also enjoy this epic big air uh, kiteboarding show. Will he make one of these kickers? Ruben, do you know who brought the rewind into things? A guy called Craig David. Okay. <laughs> we see Andrea stalling on the loop. Contra loop still holding the board by the tail. And no, that is going to count as a crash uncharacteristically there from the Italian. But uh, so far in a very, very good position. Luca with three and a half, just over three and a half minutes left. He's got his work cut out for him. We, we knew there were expectations here. As well as Luca has been riding, Andrea is the current world champion. Luca would know that and knows he's going to need something special. Still got time? 
Never over. Oh, okay. That was a nice plonker there. But we saw a great set of kickers coming through there, gents. 100%. And uh, like you say, uh, Andrea is the current Big Air World Champion and uh, also the Red Bull uh, Megaloop Champion. So uh, he's definitely uh, in, a, in a victory uh, move. Three moves ago, I'm being told this one, this replay. He's working the inside now. That's right foot forward to you at home. That's taking off of the flat, using all of their skill. They can't use the waves on the inside. It's pretty much impossible to do so. It would take quite something for a wave to come right foot forward. And there, Andrea hitting a kicker perfectly again. Oh, his foot is slipping out, but he's going to fix it. Oh. No, he's not. Trouble. He is in trouble here. He's going to have... Oh. I think he's going to go straight back to the beach here, guys. I don't think he's going to body drag... No, he will get this. Board. He will get this. You think board. he'll get yeah. that? He's, well, he's got two. He's still far, though. It's precious time. Luca two, two might have seen that, but there you can see at the moment, uh, Lucas are really having the slight upper hand in the overall impression score at the moment. And I, and I appreciate our team sharing that replay of him coming in right foot forward, as that might explain why he quickly got the upper hand on Andrea as far as overall impression is concerned. Oh, Andrea, Lewis, you were right. Yep. Andrea is body yeah, dragging no into time. the beach. Lots of these riders have boards laid out on the beach, and there's just no point in dragging back that. He needs a board now, and he will be worried a bit here. This is the event he wants to crack. It's you see the, the caddy one. run? You see the caddy There's run with caddy the board? Go. There he is. I see that caddy. He's running. Where was he? Should have been there. One slow caddy right Where there. Where were you? Get down the gym. Fired. Oh, these riders want to give it their all like Lucas Saruta here. If he but lands this... Big move. He fills his chance here. This Luca. is big. Oh, oh you can hear it. the screams from the beach as the locals cheer on their boy. Absolutely uh, wow. crazy how he just spins so fast into that tornado with the contra loop. I think it was four, maybe even five rotations. Uh, but the replay will be phenomenal because that was a, a solid move from Lucas Saruti yeah, right Yeah, but there. let's not move, miss this one left it forward. The crowd well up for this. South African... Ryder Taruti out there against the current Big Air World Champion. When this score comes in, it's going to be close. Even more interesting, they've both done five tricks now, but he's only had one crash to Andreas two. Can the Big Air World Champion recompose himself? This was the move of Luke Taruti that we're talking about, boys. One forward rotation with a tic-tac, two forward, three. Contra loop as well, loads of control, and guess what? Only Clean three. landing. Only oh, three rotations. Brilliant, now. throwing his hand to the skies. The, the, the crowds here, we can hear them through the commentary booth as Andrea finds himself on the lower end of the competition area. But uh, I think Andrea has, uh, has got some uh, something to pull out of the bag right now. I think, oh, he's still in the lead, but I think he's got the handle pass in the pocket as well. So if he is clever, he's going to go for a big unhook move. Oh, but and here, here was Luca. Saruta. Right Saruti. Oh, nice. Luca is really adding to the overall impression score again. Go onto the website, redbullkingoftheair.com, scroll down, click on the results tab, and you will see all of the tricks, all of the scores, and the current live impression score of each rider. Make sure that you click to follow the event so that it updates with every heat. But, uh, and uh, Lucas Cerruti has dropped that uh, needing a 6.63 now instead of a 6.8. So excellent work there by him with just over 20 seconds left in his heat. Could, could this be the upset of the event with both of them a mere 0 0.06 difference and I'm just, in riding. I'm just looking at all of their trick scores so far. Three out of his five uh, tricks here. He's had a lot of contra loops. Has, um... Here he goes again. This will be the last trick that he does. Double front inverted rotation boogie loop. Two more rotations on wow. the way down. No nice. board off there. but that, that... Oh, he's going for the double. Oh, on oh, the buzzer. He got it. He got it in oh. the big air watch. Why didn't we see that landing? Come wow. on, we've got to see that landing. For the crowds then, Taruti, is that double? What a smart piece of riding by the current big air world champion. He knew most of those moves had been normal mega loops and contra loops from both of these riders. In fact, they'd both been only those styles in and out. He's the only one to put a double in there. He knew this was tight. And one, now we look at some of the replays, guys. Two with a contra loop, three rotations with a board off and a contra loop here for uh, Andrea Principe uh, putting down a very nice heat score and especially riding in, going forward twice with a board spin, going forward three times and uh, with, with a mega loop that was absolutely phenomenal. Luca Saruti spinning backwards once, taking the board off by the fin, spinning another uh, backwards rotation and uh, landing that super fast and smooth. Yeah, so I think we didn't see one of the big moves from Andrea, but I so can tell you now. This was just working the inside. Nice. So we've got a big score here that we don't think we've seen here. An 8.43 contra loop board off from Andrea Principi. But, oh, man. Maybe that was his last double that they've named. But no, no, the double loop's coming in now. He got a 7.92 for his double. So Andrea, in, in the, the last lead. minute, just whacking it, getting himself in the lead as far as the top three tricks is concerned. We will still wait 
for that fourth overall impression score. We can't keep stressing enough to you viewers how important that fourth score is. The judges don't want to see the three best moves, but the best complete rider, variety, technicality, risk, right foot forward, left foot forward. But that is the end of heat 17, the second last heat of round number three. Gents, I'm, I'm running out of breath. Uh, so, oh, luckily, I, the judges have some time to uh, discuss who is going to come out on top. But uh, I think it's going to be Andre here. I yep. don't think we saw one of his big scoring contra loops here because it's huge. He's actually two points up. And that's not yeah. what we saw live just then. But it, I think you can't call that back, unfortunately, for Luca. Here are the results. It's actually quite a confident, comfortable win for Andrea Principi. We're just waiting for the scores on our screens, but we're being told in our ears to never say the scores unless they're on your screens. <laughs> but look at that footage there in front of you, ladies and gentlemen. The tablecloth wrapping its hand over the top of Table Mountain, indicating that there is a lot of wind coming still that we and apart from that what well, we've already had but again a warm and windy welcome as we now show you the very expected uh, yeah the much expected results although not for most of the heat of heat 17 andrea look at that 7.96 on the overall impression and an 8.43 his last two Ooh. tricks his last two tricks last night, two Colin. tricks i think luca had the upper hand except for those last two tricks andrea principi showing just exactly why he's the current big a world champion Exactly that, Colin. Yep, he definitely nailed that, and you know what he needed to do uh, in order to uh, advance over Luca Ceruti, uh, local boy. Definitely nice riding. Thank you so much for your uh, epic uh, style and riding, Luca. And uh, Andrea continuing uh, to the semifinals. All right, huge heat to wrap up our quarterfinals coming up now. Round three, heat number 18. The rider that has the most appearance here. Ten consecutive appearances. Aaron Hadlow up against Lorenzo Casati. They also have history. Lorenzo Caserti is the last year's winner. Both of them know what it takes to win the Red Bull King of the Air. So this could be very, very interesting. Aaron Hadlow has been here before. This is his 10th event. Nine of his events, he's made the semi-finals 66% of the time. He expects to get to the semi-finals. These two, earlier on in the year, versus against each other. Round three at the Lords of Tram event, Aaron Hadlow lost by 0 0.77. He knows how to take on Lorenzo and I think we could see 20 years of kiteboarding experience unleashed here on this heat and will Lorenzo have an answer what do you think lads well I mean Lorenzo is defending his title he just had a major uh, sponsor change he's on some new gear with the Harlem kite against uh, Aaron on his uh, duotone kite and both riders are taking off at the same time and see the difference in height as has belted it what a what mega a mega shot. moves this is going to be tough for the judges to look at two things at the same time. So I'm not sure how they're going to do it. Luckily, they have the head judge there and some trick spotters behind them to help them out. But uh, absolutely great kickoff for the, both of these guys. We've got to talk about this because there's a yeah. gentleman agreement about who should take off. But they both took off exactly the same time. So straight into another move. Lots of height. Wind's wow. picked up here. Straight into a back roll mega loop. Multiple rotations. That's three for me. Yep. And it, lovely, nice big move. But that first move. Maybe I'm heavily biased because he's from England. I thought Aaron went bigger. But here we have a quick replay of that exact shot. Lorenzo split seconds off the kicker before Aaron. This will be very interesting to see how the judges view it because the judges said the first rider in the air will take priority. But in this case, I think both, I think the I judges think had a good view of both riders because it was upwind. They got from it. The, yeah, yeah, they would have seen both riders. So interesting. And then look at that 7.10 from Aaron Hadlow on that first trick. Lorenzo not scoring as much, and that was a great example to see why Aaron was awarded a higher point than that, because he was higher. He connected. He just got that lift, and uh, he connected. But obviously, Casati replying very quickly with another move. Just puts the ball in his court. So this is exciting. I know the whole country at home are Oh, nice this. takeoff here for Aaron with a back roll, board off, mega loop. Double back roll. I don't know how, are his feet in nicely? Because that's what they got. They've got to get their feet in, the riders, comfortably. Unbelievable. The talent and the history that's here in this heat. Aaron Hadlow, two-time King of the Air champion here. Lorenzo, as you said before, defending champion. Lorenzo, however, stormed in round three last year. He was the first rider ever at the King of the Air to achieve two nine-point scores uh, in the King of the Air. Liam, uh, Mark Jacob, uh, Nick Jacobs actually being the first one to get a single nine, but Lorenzo stomped with two nines in round three last year. So. And uh, consistency, if he can tap into that same consistency from last year, then uh, Aaron Hadd will definitely have his workout cut out for him. But Lorenzo, 
Not a lot of height, not going to score too big on this one, but still just racking up that overall impression score. Yeah, as is going to be up for this here. He's in a good position. He's got one of the high scores so far. And more importantly, he's got unhooked on his side. Let's remind you, he's a five times world freestyle champion. That was his background before he's, I mean, he was always good at big air before he decided to get into big air. But can he connect here? So yep, often he, he bears off downwind, could be big. Oh, no, not ideal, but still going for that double yeah, front smashed. row uh, board off. Mega loop. So often we see these waves here, guys. If you ever sit riding out and thinking that looks perfect, it's too late. He oh. literally clipped. His rail just clipped on that on that kicker as it came. Just shows you the challenging conditions here. But great replay uh, footage here from Aaron coming in right foot forward. Front rotation, board off contra loop with another rotation on the way down. Did he stick it? That's yep. actually that's actually a dumb question. I apologize, Lewis. Did he stick? That's all right. And then the great angle from the drone here, Ruben. You can see how wide these flat sections are. When we see this angle here, we don't often see how much space there is for the riders. There is some space for some uh, full speed clean landings and takeoffs, obviously, to see how much space there is for the riders to perform all sorts of tricks on the inside. And uh, Lorenzo Cassati has uh, got some of the most technical riding out there. Uh, also Italian, riding a lot with Andrea Principi and Jeremy Berlando. The next generation is training a lot together and just coming up with new move after new move. And here he goes with a double back roll, Megaloo board off. From the fin, very controlled. They're going to like that, the judges, nice. lots of control. Great timing on his takeoff there. It looked like he'd almost lost his rail, but it wasn't at all a lost rail. It was just perfect timing. Judges are going to like that, and that just sort of puts the pressure on Aaron. None of these riders have crashed yet, guys. No, it's, it's incredible riding from both of them. And Aaron only, yeah, I almost want to say for him, only needing a 6.99 to move into first place but just under six minutes left we are in 10 minute heats knockout time this is the last heat of round number two or three and then we're moving into semi-finals after the strap in Aaron Hadlow reaching for the skies oh, oh double board off no oh, oh. messed it up he went for the double board off and I'm not sure they're scoring that so amazingly but it would have been you'd have to imagine a higher score but he's still in a good position here it's about 1.7 in it and i think he'll have to start getting his unhooked mindset on the low score that he wants to kick out is a 5.78 and that's his contra loop front roll meanwhile the low score yeah look at that he's starting to rack up some higher scores then is lorenzo he's got a kite loop back roll with four board offs uh, sorry <laughs> four rotations and he's um, getting getting some intel from his uh, his dad there on the beach waiting with his spare board and uh, yeah he just knows what he needs to do and uh, he's got all the tricks. And uh, let's see if he can take on the competitive strategy of uh, Aaron Hadlow. Be nice to see the impression score, uh, current impression score, live one coming in shortly. Because I think it'll just be for Aaron, just bearing off a little bit with that crash. But he's got a board and he's back yeah. out there. He's riding back out towards Robin and He'll tack up wind. He needs a 7.53. Here we got Lorenzo Cassati making his way through the waves, uh, looking far ahead, hopping over this wave. A lot of bump there. He, he just couldn't get momentum. There was just bump after bump after bump. Difficult to throw down the accelerator towards the kicker when you're having to negotiate the swells like that. But uh, speed this bumps. man is a spe change. speed bump. Uh, this man is no stranger to the king of the air. Winning last year a day after his birthday. Something happening here. Is he changing no. kite? No, he's just... Uh, he's indicated something. Working I on think he's changing time. kite. He might be getting into a doubles here. Yes, he is. Kite change. I called that. I'm claiming that. Oh, oh no. no he's landed something massive. No way. He's landed Did something he massive it? here. Was that his special move? Oh, which the side move. is his leash? It was right foot forwards. He, did he was it. unhooked. I think he's gone for the move which combines all of the moves, which was a contra loop, a ball off, and landing of handle pass as well. It looked to me at the end of this. Ruben, I don't believe. Are we so going to see? So he's going for a oh. front roll, backhand kite loop. And then is he going to unhook? And is he going to get the dangle with it and he pulls it round? Oh, no. Oh, I didn't. Oh, we, we saw him land that in his entry video. We were waiting for it at this event. Double from uh, Lorenzo Cassati. Magnifico. Kai change for him with uh, three and a half minutes left. Wow. Lor six. Lorenzo just changing his kite to a smaller kite so he can uh, yeah, do the doubles. Maybe even triples, which we've seen these days. I think he's just going to work the impression score here. I can't see his doubles on that size kite. It looks like a six to me, maybe. I don't know. Could it be, is. Uh, it, oh, it's a massive, massive six. six. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. Um, yeah, so I can't see that's going to, uh, you know, get more than his big 6.7, uh, 6.82. And but, here um, you can see a nice uh, stat of the live impression uh, for what it is. This is not set in stone, but this is just to give you an impression of the live impression uh, status at the moment as we're looking at this heat between Lorenzo Cassati and Aaron Hadlow. 
and this is already the last heat of round number three here at, the, at day two of the Red Bull King of the Air 2023. Thank you so much for tuning in. And here goes Lorenzo Cassati, connects with the kicker. Oh, and he goes for the S-loop. Not for me, that one. Didn't get the height I think he was after. So I can see what he's doing here. He's working his signature moves here, but I wonder, can Aaron's got to get his... Aaron really needs one of these signature moves in. I wonder if he's having a chat on the beach now. But I, I think this was a good idea to get the doubles on there. Um, but is this another oh, Aaron. attempt Aaron? Kung Fu, oh, he no. Got a gust. He got a gust on the way up there. I mean, I'd be happy to see that again on the replay. He's got a big gust on the way up there. Got Wanted to go for the Kung Fu pass, but just got yanked up there with that gust of wind, not allowing him to pass the bar behind his back. But Lorenzo stalling. Double Megaloop board off the first of the 2023 King of the Year. And rightly so, throwing his arm up, saying, what more do you want? Exactly. Wow. Stomping that double Megaloop board off like a boss. Could be curtains, Farron Hadlow. That was not what he wanted to see Could on the water. Could be curtains. Could be curtains. <laughs> what a way to put it. That's right. Well, I must have heard that one before. Yeah, you always close the curtains. Well. Maybe sometimes. Uh, uh, that's why they call it that. Well, okay. it's, whoa, a minute and a half left. The five-time world champion is heading out towards Robben Island. He throws down the accelerator, pops off a shallow kicker. Front rotation, contra loop, board off. With another front rotation on the way down, that's going to do good. He needs to drop away a 7.61. I think he'll turn around there and come back knowing right foot forward, something big's got to go down here. Will he be thinking mega loop KGB? With him? I think double handle pass for Ezra and then a well, mega loop KGB. He, he, he has the talent to get the height on the dangle pass or the kung fu pass. So. If I was him, go high on the handle. Here he is. Oh, he's slowing down. That kicker fading on him there. The first double handle pass he did over my head was in Australia in 2004. He did a back roll, a handle pass, back roll, handle pass at such a ridiculous height. I think he still has got it in his bag somewhere. He will have to dig deep. And he's though. the only rider so far, the king of the air, to, um, to actually hand, land a double dangle back down in Big Bay. But here's back to the action. Lorenzo. Double boogie loop, front rotation, not going to score big, I don't think so, but I think just adding to that overall impression score. Right, turning around here more importantly, Lorenzo Casati just turning straight round, right in front of Aaron there, who may have been going right foot forwards there, Ruben. I wonder if that has affected Aaron. He's gone for it anyway. Is, is this going to be the move? The is he going to try it again? Oh, no. Is he unhooked? He's got, can he get in the pass here? Oh. oh, he just didn't get the extra sort of distance he needs from that move. He just connected with the water when he wanted another Lorenzo. Wow. Double back rotation, double mega loop. No board of that time that'll add, but that, that'll be the last trick for him for this heat. I think the Unless he gets something on the inside, Aaron flying behind him. Double oh. mega loop, Aaron's board spitting out there. He didn't land it. Wow. Oh, that was noise. Just a lot of noise there to, as the buzzer goes for the end of the last heat of round three. Dang. Replay here. Aaron had the very inverted side on there with a back roll. Megaloop, hands on the backhand there, just to get another. He just didn't get the ball back oh. on his feet. Meanwhile, on the inside, it's... Lorenzo Casati working the impression score. It was a lovely right-footed double Megaloop delayed back row. You have to say, boys, you've got to take your hats off into both of the riders, but Casati's tactics were spot on. We have to point out to you, it's the first time a rider has changed his time. But this was the start. What an epic shot. That's going to be a shot for the history books, that. For sure. What Bring a... me that picture. Wow. What an epic, uh, epic start to the heat from both of these guys. Lorenzo going there with multiple rotations. Aaron with multiple rotations. That board off and that mega loop. And here in a double back roll mega loop with the board off. Sticking it clean. Yeah, I mean, he, he started so well, Aaron. He's done two of his biggest scoring moves were the first two moves. And it just, I think it just changed once we saw that crash. Lorenzo Casati started, changed his kite. And as I said, it really worked for him. But here was where he tried to start working this secret move is unhooking he didn't get the flow he was searching for it but he just didn't get it the kite didn't swing across how he would like he had multiple chances that he's the only one that can do that move but this rider here decided to perform the doubles he doubled it was double or nothing and he doubled him out there exactly losing a bit of height there uh, due to that kite change to a smaller kite but uh, yeah he's, he's able to pull that thing around not once but twice as you can see here and doing that board off so great technique and uh, as the waves and wind will increase throughout the event uh, yeah, he might uh, stick to that strategy because he is the only one that I've seen changing kites and really uh, yeah, adding to that variety score. Well, his double kite loop board off earned him an 8.24 and uh, they dropped the scores and unfortunately uh, Aaron Hadler will no longer be competing but what a heat from both of these riders but we just mentioned about the 8.24 and there you see it. 
cementing uh, for Lorenzo Casali. But look at his overall impression score, gents. You're talking wow. about the doubles and the kite change. Highest overall impression score we've seen at the King of the Air this year. Yeah, finishing off the quarterfinals nicely there. And I wonder if the other riders in the semis, well, they, well, they will be. They'll be looking at the scores. Their point, caddies would be saying, boys, kite change, kite change. Lorenzo's just got an 8.7. Ruben's going to the gents. Wow, wow, what an epic display of big air kiteboarding. Lorenzo Casati showing just exactly why he is the defending champion. As mentioned before, last year he was the first rider to score two nine-point tricks at the King of the Air. Incidentally, Lewis, a statistic from Lorenzo, he had 16, 16 eight-point tricks last year. The second highest was from Liam Whaley with only six. Lorenzo Casati three times higher, the eight, amount of eight-point tricks. Just and from from the from the get go, just showing the consistency and high level of consistency at which he rides, yeah, and showing that he doesn't mess around with low scoring moves. He just only throws big scores. I mean, look at the amount of moves that he's done there as well. He's done loads of moves. That's such a great construction of a heat. Early moves quite reasonable, and then upping it. So that that really was a superb heat from him. So semi finals. Wow. Already, we're already in the semi finals. Semi finals, Ruben um, uh, Lewis. I, oh man, here we go. Jason van der Spey, the local boy. Only South African remaining in this event up against uh, the Italian Jeremy Berlando, but does ride for Spain as well. Wow, the first time both of these riders finding themselves in a semi-final. Two very aggressive styles of riding. Jeremy Berlando, a fourth place finish at the Megaloop Challenge, Red Bull Megaloop Challenge in Holland. So both of these riders have got what it takes. Lewis, what, what are you expecting to see for the, from these boys? I'm expecting... Jason van der Spey to just go for it. He's got the shackles off. He's got further than ever, ever has before. He's got the whole home support, which the crowd are incredible. We're going to bring you a bit more about how much the crowd affects these, these heats a bit later on. But for these two here, it, they're both in a position they have dreamed of being in the semi-finals of the Red Bull King of the Air. And I always think to myself, this is just one heat to get into the final. I've been there myself. That is true. And it's, it's just one heat to get on the podium. Oh, here. Jason van der Spey with definitely one of the more aggressive kite looping angles. That he'll be very happy to open up the first semi-final. Ladies and gentlemen, strap into your seats for the first semi-final of the 2023 Red Bull King of the Air. Jeremy Berlando on a shallow kicker with a horizontal takeoff. Mega loop late back roll, board off by the, by the nose and a nice added rotation on the way down. Guys, keep spreading it on hashtag Red Bull King of the Air. I'm Colin Hickrit, and with me in the commentary box, 16 King of the Air appearances between these two legends, Lewis Cratton and Ruben Lenton. Gents, semi-final time. Look at it. It is just electric out there. Yeah, it's wonderful seeing everyone just sat on the beach with the famous, that's Lion's Head in the background, Table Mountain in the middle. Just kiting here, sometimes you have to pinch yourself and be like, wow, my really here but we've got the pleasure of talking you through this if you're joining us here on red bull tv around the world or perhaps online a big welcome to you perhaps you're seeing kite surfing for the first time think wow is that possible could i do that i can tell you right now you can it's not hard it would change your life like no, it did no, mine no, and ruben no, 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 no. you're not strong enough you will fly away it's super dangerous it's expensive it's boring they're so. all the things your mind tells you but ruben i know you were joking then Exactly. So the youngest kiter is about three years old and the oldest is over 80. So there is no excuses. You can even lease kite gear. You can rent it. Definitely start off with a few lessons. And uh, yeah, the beginning might take a little bit of discipline and a few uh, good conditions. But uh, definitely get involved and uh, it will uh, enhance all areas of your life. The guaranteed. best thing about the wind, it's free. No taxes on wind. Here we go then. Out to see huge. Wow. This is a biggie Ruben Lenton. It is a, a mega loop with a front roll rotation. Multiple. And huge, big moves over the horizon for me. Big board off in there, pulling the backhand, connecting. Wind must be over 30 knots to get that sort of height. We've seen the riders are getting over 20 meters. Some of them have devices, woo devices on their board. And that's going to be a big one. It is a big one. 8.52. Here, there we see uh, Jason van der Spau also with multiple rotations, taking that board off and sticking it clean after the mega loop. Absolutely phenomenal riding here in uh, the first semi-final of the Red Bull King of the Air 2023. Nice to see lots of families here. It's a nice place to bring your family. Ruben, I know you bring your young children, your wife, and being out here, I do the same. It's, you've just got to come to Cape Town, one of the meccas of kiteboarding. Uh, it's great for the whole family, and so is kiteboarding. What a vibe. My son is wow. just spotting cool. playground Wait, after playground. What, oh. What's going on here? What? What? The, what? The, the unicorns are out and about. What, what has just happened there? 
I think uh, they're supporting uh, Lorenzo Cassati, looking at the, the colors of his kite. Yeah, I was going to say, we need a color check there. These two then, not much in it at this moment in time. 0.44. And that's how you can see that it's windy. There's the tablecloth, the big cloud sitting on top of the, the table mountain. You can see all the white caps on the water. And uh, the riders are riding uh, their 8-meter kites. Some uh, ride a bit smaller if they want to go for the double loops. But uh, definitely uh, enough power for some epic moves right here on your screen. Ruben, you've been here before in a semi-final at the Red Bull Kingdom. We both have. What does it take to get to that final? It's, it's, you just have to get there. It's such a shame to just stop your journey here right now. You're one hit away from the final. What do you think these riders need to show? Exactly. There's no holding back here for Jason from the spire going into the double back roll, board spin. Oh, and unfortunately crashing that. But yeah, uh, once you're in the semifinals, uh, you got the crowd on the beach, you got your dreams high in the sky. You just got to aim for the moon and uh, yeah, don't hold back. That was my mistake. I was holding back. I didn't unhook whilst I was out there in the semifinals or even in the final. I could have just won the heat by just committing to that handle pass but I don't know if something was in my head and said oh no I'm gonna crash if I unhook and uh, yeah unfortunately I didn't do it so I ended up third. <laughs> but you got to the final Ruben and there's plenty of riders that will get to this stage of semis and will it set in not for this man huge back roll mega loop with multiple rotations that's probably three at court puts the board on cleaning Jeremy Belando up for this many people have tipped this rider to really put it put it all together at this event but Ruben just like you were just saying you have put it all together in the semi-final semi -final before. You finished fourth here, you finished, and so many people are happy I got to the semis, but time goes by where you, you think to yourself, wow, just one more heat and I would have been on that podium. We would have been known what it's looked like, what it looks like to stand up there. It's a, it's a feeling that you never forget, right, Ruben? A devastating fourth place, yeah. Nobody's aiming for that here. We've got the best athletes here in the world of kiteboarding performing today, and uh, yeah, they're all hungry for the win. And uh, right here, Jeremy Berlando, definitely a crowd favorite. But also, uh, yeah, Jason van der Spy with all the local support he's got right here. Uh, these boys are definitely on fire. Van der Spy's got some big scores on the board here. He's almost on eights, is our other rider um, from J Boat. But One van back roll, two back rolls with a board off, board spin actually. Exactly. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, not the oh, pulling not it together. Not getting his feet back on the board, but. Wow, Jeremy Berlando landing the highest score in round one and two last week and showing that he's not slowing down on that momentum with an 8.5 to an 8.22. Jason van der Spey needing an 8.67, which is going to be a big maneuver. We know he's got the talent to do it, but uh, the ocean just flattening out on him. Just a chance. I was just outside there. The wind is pumping. It is epic condition. Oh, there. Here comes Jason van der Spey riding to the inside, going for two front, front rolls with a contra loop and a board off and just landing that clean in front of the judges. Who turned the AC up? Colin, you were last over there. Didn't, didn't touch it. <laughs> it's still didn't the same. You can get your hoodie out. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting hot you because of all this I action. I think, I think the, the, the temperature difference is due to what the action we're seeing outside. But there, three and a half minutes left in what has been a semi-final that has flown by. Jeremy Belando in a firm position, I would say, but it's never over as we see Jason stalling there on the kicker. Double back rotation, board off tornado, mega loop. No, just clipping the rail, not enough height there on him. Oh, that is that's going to be devastating for him, but still plenty of time left. I don't think that would have dropped away as 8.67 needed more height on it. But I love the height and just the, I just feel like whenever Jeremy launches into the air, it just looks aggressive. It just looks like it looks like there's just power behind it. He's, he's got just, his timing down. He's got such a vertical takeoff, like he really just shoots straight up, straight up. And I think it's his kite as well. He's riding a three strut uh, slingshot kite. And it just seems to be working for him. Yeah, so uh, you really are. The emotions pouring out as a South African here, clearly. Colin, Jason's still in this, but he's got a lot of work to do. Belando, you'd argue, is probably one of the riders that's been at the top of the game now the last year or so, last two years even. He's starting to get the results and getting up there. Right, currently in first. Doesn't look great off these ways, but he seems to find a way, Ruben. Wow, a massive contra loop with two, three front rotations and that board off and just coming around clean. These riders have got such an air awareness, such a kite and body control, and don't forget the board control to come in for the landing. They sometimes come in on a very bumpy ocean. It can be very difficult to navigate yourself through the waters and uh, yeah, really uh, go for that smooth landing that the judges are definitely rewarding and looking for. Jason van der Spey. 
takeoff. Good takeoff this time. He's repeating what he crashed before. This time he should land it. Lovely. Here we go. You can hear the local crowds outside cheering their boy on. Riding for Air Rush and uh, putting on an epic show here for all the spectators and yeah. yourself. I hope you're uh, very comfortable or maybe sneaking a, a little uh, live stream in during the work. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this. You're here with me, Ruben Lenton, together with Lewis Crathern and Colin Heckroot, bringing you the live Red Bull King of the Air 2023, the most prestigious kiteboarding event in the, in the world. 6.32 will be kicked out by Jason Vendis by then. It's currently, you know, there's two and a half roughly between them. I think it's going to go down to about one and a half because it's just, you can see on his screen just there, the 6.32 is currently in his top three scores. I think that's going to get removed. So we're watching mm. up there. Definitely think this is in the sevens, over seven and a half for me, that last move. And that really puts him back in the mix here because he hasn't really gone into another gear here, Jamie, uh, Jeremy Bilando. He's done lots of... Lots of powerful tricks, but not you know, not loads and loads. He's only got four tricks to me so far on my screens. And remember, the way this works, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, about the three top scoring tricks accompanied with a uh, overall impression score, which the judges will add at the end of the heat, which can still make a big difference. So uh, Jeremy Berlando is already uh, quite some points ahead of uh, Jason van der Spuy. Oh, 30 seconds left in this heat. Wow, semi-final time, but he has a quick replay. We missed this Here, one. He goes Here unhooked. we go, Jason van der Spey with the Kung Fu pass. Does he stick it? This could change He'll everything. Check. Don't go this will, Oh, I, I don't foresee him crashing this one with the talent that he has, and he sticks it, throws it. That'll add nicely to his overall impression score. If you look on your screens, it did spike his overall impression score. Go on to redbullkingoftheair.com, scroll down, click on results, and you can see the score for every trick as well as the live impression score. We, along with watching if you've got two screens that would actually be ideal yeah we apologize these scores aren't refreshing as i'd like to see them in your top corner they are on the website and i can tell you there is less than one point between these two riders oh, but more big. importantly he's five. done the handle passes jason van der Spy, but will the height come through of jeremy Belando? oh but that was the end of semi-final number one semi-finals guys ruben talk us through these highlights what a heat speaking of heights there was uh, jason van der spout taking off there with a double mega mega loop board off uh back roll and here uh jeremy Belando is flying through the screen with his signature uh contra loop and here we see a double front roll board spin mega loop from uh, jeremy Belando with an edit rotation there's a devastator maybe on the way. This is going close, Ruben. Here we go. It's into a back roll, board off, double back roll, triple back roll into a bit of a tornado, into a fourth. That's uh, unbelievable moves. And I wonder if the height here, we did see it earlier on in the event where the height was just enough on impression score. But this man here on right foot forwards, I don't remember seeing so much to the right from um, Jeremy Belando. So will we see a big change in the impression score? Colin, I know you want your South African rider oh, to get through. He no. looked good in his moves, but there weren't loads of moves from Jeremy Belando, and that's in his favour from Jason Van Der Less than a point in it. Will the impression score help the South African Drum the roll. Let's wait for it, ladies and gentlemen, as is it going to be the first time in many a year that we have a South African in the final? We see some celebrations there. I see a yellow oh. vest, Jeremy Belando. As we wait, so they probably have seen the scores on their side. It'll be very interesting to see that was a close one. if that's a preemptive celebration or not. But there's a lot of relief on the face of Jeremy Berlando. They see him with his coach as well. Now can he get his mindset in gear here? Can he be the one to lift the trophy as they look at the scores? They want to know how they were scored. He wants to know his impression score. I think that was a lot closer than we might think, boys, because he didn't do loads and loads of tricks. We've seen these riders landing nine, ten tricks. I've got four tricks down for Jeremy Belando on our live scoring. Can we just go back there? Call Give in me a seat. second, my good sir. I will get you there. Dunsky so the Pyra. you viewers, you can go back onto the heats, click on the different heat numbers, and you can then go back and view the scores as we are doing now. So, yeah, Lewis, we have two crashes out of seven tricks for uh, Jason van der Spey and one crash and f out of five tricks for Jeremy Belando. But uh, beautiful, there you there go. It there it drops. There are the results for exactly uh, a point difference. Oh, he got more. He did. Jason van der Spey got point uh, point six more, point zero six, sorry, more on his impression score. But it wasn't quite enough. He could have just done with one extra move. I think he's going to find that tough to deal with over. I mean, that was. Uh, hold on a minute. It's. Oh no, it was one whole point. So I thought for a second that was the same number. I, know. <laughs> I think, but listen, I am very impressed with Jeremy Belando's riding at the moment. He's showing that same level of aggression and consistency that he's been showing since uh, since last week. 
you know, there was a big difference, there's a quite a big difference in wind, quite a big difference in conditions, yet that con continuity uh, seems to persist, Ruben. Yes, uh, Jeremy Berlando, uh, he is a crowd favorite, uh, along with Andrea Principi as well, and Lorenzo Cassati, obviously, uh, the crown defender. And uh, yeah, we're on the way with the semi-final, heat number 20, and uh, coming up is uh, Andrea Principi from Italy, the powerhouse uh, against Edgar Ulrich, the magician, I'd like to call him. He is pulling out some phenomenal tricks, and this is going to be a, a heat to watch. This might as well could have been a final, like almost every heat here at the Red Bull King of the Air. Oh, this is ap oh the mouth-watering stuff here. Edgar Ulrich really showing his stuff at this year's King of the Air event, a very first semi-final appearance for him. Andrea Principi, this is his second semi-final in two years with a podium finish last year. The Italian versus the Frenchman. Woo, what a battle, ladies and gentlemen. This is semi-final number two. Only now the horn is going for this heat. Oh, and he's... Jeremy oh. Berlando was already flying through the screen. And here we got uh, Andrea Principi sticking his uh, first move of this uh, semi-final heat. Oh. Andrea Principi in the blue vest with the helmet there in the front of your screen. From Italy, the current Big Air World Champion. Last year, third place finish on the podium. But uh, can Edgar Ulrich do what it takes? to find himself not only here in his first semi-final, but it'll be his first final if he does. But a 10-minute heat, guys. We have three semi-finals. This is the second one. Strap in, and you see Andrea oh, wanted to throw down the hammer, but just having to negotiate that chop there. As we see, a lot of white water. Cape Town famous for its Cape Doctor southeasterly wind during the summertime. It blows from the... The wind comes from towards the left-hand side of your screen. Those of you who don't kite, Get down to the beach, get some lessons and be involved and get involved with this incredible sport. Don't be intimidated by what these guys are doing. This sport is for everyone of all ages. Uh, Lewis mentioned the youngest kind of being three, the oldest being over 80. I love it. But here's a replay of what we missed on the inside of Andrea Principi with a front rotation. Boogie loop, not a lot of height and plonking it oh, like a crashing. brick. Oh, look at his kite, almost invert there. Almost, Should yeah, recover. Yeah, nice Should kite go. flip. I wonder if the kite flip scores these days, but uh, no, he was already down in the water, so uh, definitely no scores for that move uh, for Andrea Principi. You mean and the kite flip osmosis? <laughs> How do the lines work out okay after that? It just doesn't make sense, does it? And I think Edgar Ulrich just mistimed this first move. This is Andrea Principi coming in right foot forward. In the blue vest Cruising. with the helmet on. You see some of the riders actually wearing helmets, and why that is, is not for the impact on the water. It is for... Uh, yeah, avoiding a board to the head because these guys have the board flips, board offs, and they might just uh, yeah get the board in the head, and that's the last thing you need. And here, Andrea Principi goes for a double front roll, board off contra loop, and sticking that one clean. Good landing, that Ruben. That was a hard landing. You could see his board bouncing. He had lots of he had lots to deal with there. Sometimes you get a nice soft swing in. We're going to get a nice replay of this at black and white shot edgar <laughs> ulrich with a double front roll board spin uh, mega loop oh front and landing a clean steezy little nose grab on the way down nice. there that will add to his overall impression score edgar knows he's got his work cut out for him everybody is expecting andrea principi to advance through but edgar has had a, a amazing event so far and uh andrea launching oh. off the kicker back rotation board off back rotate rodeo mega loop Pulling on that backhand, another rotation, and, and pumping the fist before he lands it cleanly. The Italian showing just exactly, oh, oh, magnifico. I love seeing just how much it means to him. How much, you know, he's, oh, here we go, let's talk about it. Oh, he's bailed out of that one, Edgar. Just, just seeing how much it means to someone that's landed that move so many times, but at King of the Air, it means that much to you to be in the semifinals, to land that, to hear the crowd. I really enjoy seeing the riders embrace that you know it's wonderful to see a big, big air world champion multiple big air world champion but i guess he is happy because he's been beaten at this event already by edgar Ulrich in round one he needs to sort his, sort his game out for this one ruben and andrea yeah. principi uh, obviously uh, also a red bull megalop winner from earlier uh, this year he's definitely uh, yeah the top rider uh, to watch and uh, these, uh, these riders uh, live and breed kiteboarding, and it's just beautiful to see how they are shaping their lives around this beautiful sport with so much passion. Oh, what a shot there. No, so much passion. Ruben, I love it. And we want to share the sport with everybody. 
Again, as I said, don't be intimidated by this, what you are seeing here, the extreme maneuvers these gents are pulling off. Be inspired and come and be a part of the sport. Get some lessons, do it properly. Langerbahn, an hour's drive downwind from where we are, one of the best locations in the world to learn how to kite. I was there yesterday, I almost got my head chopped off. Head which, chopped off? What, yeah. Were you learning how to kite again, Ruben? Don't be joking, Ruben, it's I, safe. I, I was trying to help another, another kiter out. A which, drone? Uh, Is it a drone? A kite inverted. So uh, I tried to help him out, but made a little mistake, and uh, yeah, the wind just got caught as the bridle was wrapped around my neck. Luckily, still okay, and we're looking here at Edgar Ulrich going for a triple forward rotation contra loop. Yeah, board off. Cool. Back to the action here. There's a little break in things here, guys. This has not exploded the semi-final just yet, but one feels that it will be exploding soon. Edgar Ulrich has uh, just one reasonable score on the board right now, but we've got an 8.52 from Andrea Principi. That's a high score. And these guys are teammates as well uh, at Duotone, together with you as well, uh, Lewis. Uh, and this is definitely a battle of the Titans. Yeah, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, quick takeoff there on the kicker. Rodeo. What? Looked like a contra loop. You're welcome to correct me, gents, but Rodeo Contra it looked like it. We'll know now as it drops here on our scores. But a little bit of a lull, as you say, uh, Ruben. You can see it from these shiny patches. Lull in both waves and wind. And but he, again, it's about who's the most complete rider, regardless of the conditions. He took a wave there on the way up as well. Often that's really affected the overall height for the riders. The wave closed out. These aren't the cleanest waves we're used to on Kite Beach here. And, uh, but he still goes for the move anyway. And he's one of the best in the business at getting the board on quickly. That's why he got away with it. Is he going to take off this? Yeah. Oh, whoa. whoa, we've got a massive gust on the takeoff, and he's going for the S-loop. I mean, not at the critical section of the loop, but he definitely... Uh, I liked it, I liked it. He definitely saved height. that trick. Because a lot of height. He got a massive gust on the takeoff, got yanked a little bit out of control, wow. but he was able to stabilize himself and still finish his maneuver. As some nice sets do come in. What, what I love about him is I think he reacted to that situation. Mm. I don't think he had that in his mind. Mm. I think he's got up there and thought, this is the right move for this feeling of takeoff and the win. That, that's what's wonderful about That's what life is all about, right? Yeah, reacting oh. to situations. Yes. Andrea Principi. Oh, we hear a quick replay from Edgar on the inside. Right foot forward, double back rotation, board off, mega loop. Keeping those legs nice and long out of the board and landing a cleanie there. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I like what he's doing with oh, right foot forward. That's the biggest you see. on. Look at these waves coming in now, boys. I think we're oh. going to see a step up here. We have to remind you, he has got the much appreciated mega loop kgb in his locker edgar Ulrich, and he's definitely going to have to try that in this heat he definitely wants to put on some scores on the board just this. like uh, this move we missed from andrea principi going for that rodeo uh, contra loop with one forward rotation i believe not the lowest kite angle but again it'll just keep his scoreboard ticking so nice to see that s loop from andrea principi he was the first rider ever at the king of the air last year to do a s loop so incredible what lewis what did the if you look on the scores here on redbullkingoftheair.com what did he get for his s loop he got a 7.74 that's a big score that is so that's put him a bit more in control of this heat but we know right foot forwards coming in edgar auric has the mega loop kgb landed on less than a three or four times in history is he going to be thinking about it not here he isn't no, not getting the height going to the inside oh no bend it not the not the most height he didn't have enough height to get the board back under his feet but oh edgar needed that 7.4 that he did get there he needs a 9.17 to get back into first place as the heat stands not considering the overall impression score but he should uh oh but he is at just over two minutes it's precious time against a, a competitor like andrea you can't afford to waste time like that against a, a athlete like him as you see a lot of bump all of a sudden again sometimes you get clean kickers nice spacious uh, areas between the waves and then bumps again but edgar up and riding there left foot forward heading out towards robin island there towards our our rescue jet ski he's gonna pop over this one yeah just a quick shout out to our guys on the jet ski greg burdish he's on there with his pa partner hats off to you guys but edgar currently in second oh he needed a one a 9.17 and now it's a 9.2 he needs Ooh. a mega loop KGB, guys. I want to see some gnarly stuff. Come on. His feet in there. He's getting his feet set a bit. Maybe that's the adjustment we're seeing. Mm. Sam, I'm not sure who your, your odds on are. I think both riders are going to take off at the same time here. No, it's going to be back Turning towards around. Edgar. One minute and a half. Could it? No, no it's not going to be it. He knows someone on the beach can say, sorry, sorry to tell you this, but you're going to have to do that again. Although he's going out left foot forwards first. Can he get a combo in here, Is guys? he going to unhook? This is big. Not going to go for this kicker. Maybe this one here. Yep, he rigs his kite. No, launches no. off. Back rotation, double back rotation, contra loop board off. Another back rotation. And another another rotation. Come on, land it, bro. 
throwing that hand. He oh, had look at the distance that he travelled. That is huge. And he's got to compose himself, lads. Wow. He can't get carried away here. He's got to have two seconds to think. Nice move, mate. Turn around. Now you need to make oh. a little KGB. There's exactly. the goal. Under a minute left. Under a minute. This is intense. It's going down to the wire. I reckon he'll score in the eight points for that one. I do, Oh, too. that is huge. This is massive. 45 seconds. But like you said, Lou, he, all he needs is that Megaloop KGB that he busted out in the first heat on the first day of the against, Red Bull King of the against Air. Against Andrea Principi. They should rename it the Megaloop Devastator if he lands this. This is big. Andrea Principi, is oh, he body, body dragging? dragging. He's so all eyes move. on. We need all the eyes here on Edgar Ulrich with 25 seconds remaining. We need to see the other rider on our screen. We think a Meg Megaloop KGB is coming in. Come on, we don't want to see body dragging. Get the other rider on the screen here. Here we go. Here we go. He's Ten coming seconds. in, right foot forward. He Ten wants seconds. the crowd. He's going for it. He needs us. He's going to unhook. He has eight seconds left. Take off, take off. He's going to wait till the water flattens out. Yes, there he throws back, goes up, front rotation. No, he's not doing it. Contra loop, board flip, another front rotation. The buzzer's gone. He should land it. Is that going to be enough? He needed an 8.19. Nah, that's not going to be enough. I don't I'm think so, but we still have the overall impression score. And True that. Wow. Oh, again, again. now we're going to go nail-biting until we wait till the scores be released, but it'll be interesting to see also what... Uh, what Andrea Principi crashed there as he had a massive amount of distance to cover body dragging, but that is the end I thought of he was semi final gonna go number the, two. I thought he was going to go for the Mega Loop KGB like he just needed there, but uh, nope. Uh, some wow, highlights here yes, from this what heat. A heat. What a phenomenal heat here in the semi final. The second semi finals here. Andrea Principi going absolutely massive with a double back row rodeo board off. Huge. <laughs> wow, what a control. A Clearing thing? such a distance, traveling over 150 meters far. Huge grant. Here, no, him? Edgar Ulrich, not getting the height on that one, but uh, sticking it clean, definitely putting scores on the board. And yep, here also jumping to the inside with a nice double back roll board off and an added rotation on the way down. I always love how Edgar just uh, keeps the board off, stretches out his legs. And here, uh, Andrea Principi with that front roll contra loop board spin. Oh, but oh, Ruben, what a heat from both these guys. I'm so impressed with Ed, Edgar Ulrich's competition mindset to throw it to, to Andrea Principi in the way that he did. But Andrea also just showing why he is the current Big Air uh, champion. You, I love the rodeos that he's been bringing in. As far as I know, the only one who's been doing rodeos at the King of the Air. But there was another double back whoa, rotation, board off, contra Andrea, loop. Andrea had to turn around there Had to turn it. around, get out of his way with another two rotations on the way down and a fist pump. I wow, think, this is oh, this this I, was a sensation. I think, heat. unfortunately, I think it was just too much of a gap to bridge in heat yeah. score from Edgar. So yes, in first place, Andrea Principi, the current world champion, with a huge impression score in the end, 8.22. So that must have been for that S loop, guys. 32.35, yeah. comfortable in the end for him. He needed that mega loop KGB, I think oh. Edgar. He needed a straight 10, but he'll be so proud of his performance to get to the semi-final here. I think the lack of height that all, uh, Edgar Ulrich had towards the beginning of his heat, you can see all his scores in the seven point range, only clipping close to eight points towards the end of his heat. If he had gotten more height, there is an ecstatic Andrea Principi from Italy making his way through to a second successive King of the Air final. That is the end of semi-final heat number two. Come and live with us, the action as Ayrton Cozzolino gives him a good rub on the head there. Nobody gets more stoked than Andrea Principi himself. This kid has got his dream set and he is going to conquer them no matter what. He is training off the water, on the water, and just giving it his all. He is living the dream. He's becoming one of the athletes of our time, and he's moved into that, that role of top competitor to legend. What he's achieved this year, winning, to remind you, the Big Air World Championships in Spain. If he'd have won the Lords of Tram event in France, it would have been a clean sweep that we might not ever seen again. He won the Red, Loop, Red Bull Megaloop, and he's getting himself in the mood. And this is what he does, Ruben. He's stoked for it. He finds a way. He just finds a way. So often he's close in his heat, but he just finds a way. And he is now getting himself in the mood. Oh, my goodness. A Magnifico. Very, Magnifico there from the Italian. A very energetic uh, Andrea Principi. And all we need now oh. is uh, Lorenzo Cassati to uh, complete the final uh, as a group of friends. Um, and Jamie Overbeek will have to give it his all to uh, etch out the current king of the air, Lorenzo Cassati. Uh, but yeah, Jamie has got the height, he has got the technicality, but um, yeah, this, this will have to be a, this, a heat to watch. This is incredible. Jamie Overbeek, Lorenzo Cassati, first place and second place finisher from last year's king of the air. Unfortunate that one of these gents will be going home after this. 
Wow, wow, wow. I love what you say. Also, Jeremy, uh, Jamie definitely having the height factor. Kasati having the... Con I, I like to use the word consistency, but there goes the buzzer for the last semi-final for today. Double back rotation. Double uh, double mega loop there. With Whoa. a double back row. Wow, what wow, a way from to come Kasati, out of the gate. He ended with the doubles, and now he's starting with them in this heat. Whoa, double mega loop, double back row. Yep, on his, uh, on his Harlem kite, I think he's on a six meter um, with his strategy from the previous heat. He saw that it was working, so now he's just going to get the doubles out of the way. And he's hoping for the wind to pick up so that he gets some more height and maybe even make this his but best four moves. he's on the six already, is he? Yeah, that's what I said. So he's uh, coming out of the gate with his oh, six. He's reversing it. Hoping he's uh, got enough height. I think he's going to go bigger at the end. Reversing the tactics he did earlier no, on. He's going to go... Uh, try to uh, get the best scoring tricks with his doubles already straight out of the bat. Okay, we saw him change to the six last time. I wonder, ja I think Jamie Overbeek is going to be forced into a kite change here, Ruben. I think he's going to have to do it. We've seen uh, Jamie Overbeek changing his kite to the Enduro last year at Red last year's Red Bull King of the Air, and that was working for him. And uh, now he's riding his Vortex, a new kite from Ozone, uh, also with the lighter Alula material. And uh, yeah, he's performing great on that. But it looks like Lorenzo Cassati is in the zone and has got his eyes on the prize. So uh, let's see who can keep his head cool and has got the best strategy in this heat. Still riders jumping in and around the 20 meter range. As I said, some of these riders have got Wu devices on their board. Lorenzo Cassati, 19.4. Aaron Hadlow, 21 meters. Those of you wondering at home, how high are these riders jumping? Oh. But as we see, Whoa. with probably the sickest S loop we've seen at the King of the Air, Lorenzo Cassati, what? showing exactly why he dominated the event last year. Oh, that was epic. But uh, woo, as we calm down from that S loop, we have an interview with uh, first time finalist Jeremy Berlando on the beach. Take it away. Okay, guys, Jeremy Berlando, our first finalist of this king of the air congrats brother how was that Dude, insane first final of my life in king of the air second king of the air of my life can't believe it dude can't believe it bro i wish you all the best are you ready for this final the biggest final of your life of course man now it's all in so let's send it man let's go man all the best thanks mate thanks Thank you very much, Carl Ferrer, our South African Wave champion, former champion down there, giving us all the info. Here is a Jamie Overbeek with two front rolls and a contra loop. Didn't, it's not what he wanted here. And uh, Kasati, last year's champion, is looking like he is in the driving seat, boys, of this semi-final. And uh, look, the crowds are here now. It is, what is the local time? 5.39. And the wind nicely picked up so that Lorenzo Cassati can come out of the gate, out of the starting blocks with his six meter already. So now his highest scoring tricks are the doubles. Double front roll. Oh. Oh, and landing on the wave, a fantastic example of how you can have everything under wraps, but if you land on that wave, there's just not much you can do. But there, 8.36 for Lorenzo Cassati. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, yes, that was for his S loop. Jamie. Reaching for the skies. Look at that shot. Double front roll board off. Steve's extending, master. extending that board away from his body and his legs. Not the lowest aggressive kite angle, but a lot of heights in that one, boys. Woo! Nice reply there from Jamie Overbeek. So often that can really that energy you feel and when, when your competitor crashes, you just think, oh nice, this will be a nice moment to stick one nice powerful big move in. And he's done so. So Jamie Overbeek from the Netherlands. Um, I still am going to call. He's going to change for that smaller kite for the double sooner or later. I mean, his caddy must be telling him, look, the scores that Lorenzo is getting with that double loop, because he can do them, Jamie, by the way. For sure. And both of these guys were rookies last year at the Red Bull King of the Air, finishing on the podium with uh, Lorenzo Cassati, obviously taking that first spot last year, and uh, Jamie Overbeck coming in second. But now only one of these guys can make it to the final. Uh, to complete the final against Jeremy Berlando and Andrea Principi. And uh, yeah, uh, Andrea, or no, sorry, Lorenzo Cassati was looking for a new kite sponsor. And uh, he found uh, Harlem Kites and Lua to support him on his journey as a professional kiteboarder. And look at this, a massive me a double mega loop with a board oh, off. Oh, that's huge. Very similar to Liam Whaley's from last year's quarterfinal, but it'll be very interesting to see how the judges score that. A lot of commitment in that maneuver. Jamie definitely seeming like he has his work cut out from him. He's in a combo situation. He needs to get some scores on the board as it is almost halfway through this uh, heat. The last semi-final 
before we go into a bit of a break and then get off into the finals after that already we have one new finalist and uh, one old and with both of these riders in the semi-final we're going to have another old Guys, uh, finalist in so this is unbelievable guys just spare a thought for everyone italy here i mean i know that jeremy Belando flies under the spanish flag but he's definitely got a connection to italy as well mm. you've got yeah. casata here looking strong to get to the final principi three riders with such connections with italy they must they must be uh, loving it it's, right? it's incredible bella 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 magnifico as we see jamie a delayed takeoff on the ramp double back rotation not a wow. lot of hard tornado mega loop on the way down <laughs> covering a ton of this i love the height and distance that this guy gets as we have four and a half minutes left in the last semi-final Colin, wow, wow. Colin, Colin, you've got to call it like that Ooh. every time that, that tornado voice. That was the best. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I'll, tell, it, well, I'll tell you what, these riders make it so easy to commentate as you just get psyched up in the moment. I hope you at home are as well. Here we go. Kasati. Oh, with a double. A nice delay double. Back roll board off. Wow. I love the delay on that. That wasn't just a whoop through double. It was just delay. That was excellent work there from Kasat. He's dominating this heat at the moment. If we can have a replay of that. That's going to be But It's actually a bit closer than we think it. Is it time for Jamie Overbeek to change? Colin, you mentioned mm. a delayed double there. I personally think the delay on the double will give him less points than if he just whammed it straight round because the kite's then retentioning, as, yo, going back up. But I feel like that, I hear move, what you're saying. that move actually needed that. Like, yeah. it, was, it was the right thing Correct. to do. Mm -hmm. Here okay. he goes. He goes off the wave into that back roll with a double mega loop board off. Oh, and wow. Beautiful. I love it. Oh, that is just epic work. Oh, throwing his hand to the sky. Lorenzo Cassati is so emotional when he won last year. And the riders were riding eight meter kites. He decided to change his strategy. He said, I can go big enough on my six meter. And now he's just pulling doubles. Look at the height Jamie Overbeek is getting here with this double front roll board off uh, contra loop with two added rotations on the way down. I think he's got a thing. swap now. I think he's worked this category out now. He's done the biggest moves he can. He's got to go and get that small kite and start doubling pretty ASAP because the remove if we look at the top three scores from Lorenzo, if I could hazard a guess, I bet they're all double loops. Yep. Gents. A 9.42, the first nine point score we have seen of the 2023 Red Bull King of the Air, done by none other than Lorenzo Cassati. Absolutely sensational stuff there for him. Wow, that was for a double kite loop back roll board off. That was the latest score to drop there for the Italian. Jamie has his work seriously cut out of him, needing a 9.64 to edge out the Italian. As we see a quick replay here from Cassati, front rotation. That was a doobie booby, I think. James Double. <laughs> I, I believe that's the name, what I heard on the live stream from uh, from Spain. Very nice. Oh, Lorenzo just, he, he, he tapped into that consistency from what he had from last year. Excellent stuff as we have just over two minutes left in the seat. Lorenzo definitely showing why he is the current uh, Red Bull King of the Air. And uh, hopefully he can remain his title. But uh, he's in the semis, taking on Jamie Overbeek and uh, hopefully uh, he can make it to the final. Jamie, I think, changing Kai. I really do believe he's on the inside swapping. Cassati on the inside, right Ooh. foot forward. Pulling a double to the inside. That oh, Jamie responding, back rotation. Back rotation, board off double with Tornado. a mega loop. Tornado, yeah. Oh, I like it, oh, a lot. And he had to work very hard to uh, compose himself there. That is sinus is cleaned out there with that little wash. Wow, nice. ladies and gentlemen, the last semi-final, the crowds are building here on the beach. 2023 Red Bull King of the Air. This is sensational stuff. I would have expected a kite change there from Jamie. Yeah, I'm as, really uh, surprised at this, Ruben. He's got his brother on the beach, the family. Like, surely someone seeing the scores here is going, I can tell you, look, it's an S loop. It's not anything else of the other variations that all the other moves that Jamie's done. It's an S loop. Jamie hasn't done it. And two different double kite loops from Lorenzo, which are his, are his highest scores. He should have changed a while back, I feel. I wonder if this is what's being signaled now. I don't think he has time. Exactly. Oh, you are looking at the last semi-finals here before uh, continuing with the final of the Red Bull King of the Air 2023. This is day two. We had the, the, the first day last week and uh, the wind is back here in the mother city of Cape Town. Oh, and, uh, oh, it is. It is back indeed, Ruben. Back with full force. Perfect conditions for the world's biggest and most prestigious kiteboarding event. Lorenzo popping off a shallow kicker. Double mega loop back roll, but it looked like the wind just faded on him there. I don't think he's going to replace an 8.36 with that. Maybe it'll be close, but not a lot of height on that. But the Italian, exactly like last year, just dominating three eight point tricks and a nine. 
I Absolutely think. excellent stuff there from the Italian. But uh, Jamie turning around, he has eight seconds left. On the inside here, Cassati. S loop on the inside with right foot forward. Nice. I don't think we've seen that yet. He is uh, definitely doing it Unreal. both ways. This was his switch S loop. So wow. doing that trick like one of the most riskful tricks in the sport. An S loop, uh, seeing that perform to the left and to the right. Very uh, great riding here from Lorenzo Cassati. Great heat that. Th that was a really wonderful heat, guys. So double back roll into. That's about five back rolls with that move maneuver from Jamie Overbeek. That was a great heat. Um, wow, I don't know what to say. Lots, he just, oh. I mean, the way he, if you blow, if your equipment breaks there, catastrophic equipment failure there, Ruben, you're going straight down to the the, the, the ocean bed. That, but, um, that would be definitely a moment where your equipment could fail. And here, Jamie Overbeck getting that epic height and landing it clean. Let's see what the judges say about the overall impression score. Uh, it looked like uh, Lorenzo Cassati went with the right strategy there on his six meter to pull off those double mega loops and combining them with the board offs. Very, very, very professional. It's going to be huge. I and mean, we're just going through all of these many moves that you can see here from this brilliant semi finals at the Red Bull King. Yeah, the riders punching. Yeah, they're so stoked to land these moves in front of this crowd. Double front roll with a mega loop into a double mega loop. Two and a half. Uh, yeah, good point. Two and a half rotations. It's been really impressive what these riders have been able to do. And I think for Jamie Overbeek, I thought it's been a hard year for him after that podium here last year, you know, on his first time ever at King of the Air. Lots of expectation from him. And he's actually only managed semi-finals Ooh, only this year. But that's that. still big for him. But 8.94 on the impression score, Ruben. I think that's one of the highest heat scores we've had is over. 35.62. But what a heat from Jamie Overbeek. He'll feel really hard done by there. Definitely. We've seen the heat scores go in a total of 30, 31, 32, but to come in with a 35.62. Very, very nice riding by Lorenzo Cassati. Unfortunately, a goodbye to Jamie Overbeek for this year's Red Bull King of the Air. But uh, we've got an epic final on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Ruben, you can see the crowd there just repositioning themselves. We spoke a little bit about the rider still pumping the air you know with their hands they don't do this all the time when they're riding around training you know but this is such a special place here with so many people on the beach coming from coming from the town just in the background it's about 30 minutes away in the background and uh it's a big part of the end ruben how did you feel when you used to ride here and look back and see thousands of people there's nothing like it is there i mean looking forward to the red bull king of the air these riders are all year long training for it because it is the most prestigious event in kiteboarding Red Bull has been supporting the fastest growing water sport in the world for over decades. And here you can see the spectators sitting in the sunshine, in the wind, all together. And uh, they're just uh, loving it. And they bring, they make all these amazing signs that you see your flag. When you see your own country's flag on the beach, they, they, they make the event for me, Ruben. They get involved. They're not just blocked off, by the way, from coming on the beach. They're on the beach. They can almost touch you. And they're very much part of it we've got a wonderful clip here we've got a wonderful clip to show you just just how much the crowd mean to us here at the red bull king of the air and a moment to pause to get ready for this final but the crowds are there ruben there there's thousands of them there now Yes, close to 4,000 on the beach, and there you can also see the judging tower. We've got five of the best judges sitting there, watching closely, supervised by the head judge. And here, uh, Lorenzo Cassati being very, very, very happy. Pure excitement here at the Red Bull King of the Air. Beaches like this are usually the reason people come to visit Cape Town. From early November each year, everyone starts watching the weather reports very closely waiting for the strong summer winds to kick in and to predict when the Red Bull King of the Air might finally happen. And then we get a call from the contest directors. It's on. And the excitement is unreal. The summer winds have arrived. And this is what brings thousands of kiteboarders and spectators to Kite Beach every year. The wind that gets here is just blowing you away and that's what we're looking for. You don't get these conditions anywhere else. The wind has to be so extreme and the conditions really have to line up. It can be dangerous, you know. I have to say, the crowd here at the Red Bull King of the Air is amazing. These brave souls just come down to watch this sport, no matter the weather. 
People from all over the world standing side by side with the riders. They don't care that the sand's flying in their face all day. With the wind blowing so strong and the waves firing, just the sound. You gotta be here to feel it. You can hear it from the water like this and then get you pumped even more, you know. As the rounds progress and the action really starts to heat up, the audience rise to their feet and really roar with every jump. The people get more and more excited and they want to get closer and closer to the action. <laughs> During the finals, it really blows up. Spectators are drawn closer and closer to the action with the feet in the water and they just never lose their energy. You see they're screaming, you're like, ah, you want to do good, you know? What an incredible gathering of energies and an eruption of excitement. And in the end, the audience carries the champion up the beach, almost like a fairy tale. Without people, uh, this competition would not happen, you know. Senza il pubblico non daremo mai così in alto. Huge thank you to everybody watching, everyone who comes down. Your support is much appreciated. Grazie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you well. Grazie. Grazie mille. Yeah, some nice moments there, and it's important for us to thank the crowd that have really made this event what it is. Now, very shortly, we'll have Sam Light join us in the booth here to talk to us about some of the moves we've seen on the way up to the finals. Um, and I believe, Sam, Sam, you are in here. How are you doing, Sam? Hello, chaps. What a day we are witnessing. Amazing to see the three Italians in the final. If I had to put my money on those three, I would have done at the start of the day. I know. <laughs> we don't do betting here. I said, didn't you? Why didn't you? <laughs> Sam, you've picked out some of your favourite clips from the day on the journey from the start to the finish to talk about, and we're going to get into them very shortly. But how would you sum up for this, if you could, in just one sentence uh, today, this year's King of the Air? This year's King of the Air, we have seen the next generation absolutely dominant, as we saw last year as well, but these guys have really solidified themselves as legends. We're seeing Andrea and Lorenzo in re second final in a row that they've managed to get to, which is an impressive feat in itself. And now their good friend, Jeremy Volando, my teammate, has joined them in the final, which with some incredible riding, actually. Jeremy's looking really good, doing some of the biggest moves of the day. That's why I picked Jeremy's trick, one of Jeremy's tricks, and we're about to see. Even when you look at the semi-finals then, when we talk about the next generation, it's all of them in the semi-finals, you know? Like, it's been a tough event for our sort of old guard here just some names i pick out aaron hadlow getting to round three mark jacobs also round three and uh I mean, heel i guess he's one of the uh, the old how old is heel he's you know he's not a 15 year old anymore but um 27 these, yeah so uh, the younger riders the, the sub 20s making it really well through good effort from edgar ulrich but um well, who's that in the background practicing with an air sleep <laughs> amazing but yeah, like you say, it's the next generation taking over. We could already see it uh, last year with also an under-18 final. And uh, now again, here the guys are. Uh, Jeremy Berlando, Andrea Principi, and Lorenzo Cassati. And uh, you can see just how they moved, moved the way through the, through the heat ladder to, uh, to make it there. And uh, it was not an easy feat. Jamie Overbeek, the only rider that had to go through the second round. No, Andrea Principi, sorry guys, I have to remind you, he also did. It was Jeremy Berlando was the only one of these finalists to win round one so we had that big conversation about going through round two and i think you guys might be right maybe exactly. does two it put you right. in the flow well it doesn't if you're out i guess meanwhile <laughs> the guy double double loop still in the background sam we're going to go into some of your moves of the event so far i'm excited to show everyone these moves uh i've picked actually throughout the day i've picked 10 of my favorite moves but i've highlighted the best four of the finalists these guys really separate themselves. They were going higher than anyone else. Coming up first, we've got Lorenzo. This was actually the first double kite loop board off we saw of the day. And it was the first trick into the eight point scores. Yeah, I think it's definitely worth bringing this one in. It might not have been one of his best doubles or moves, but it set, it really set the tone for what we were about to see over the course of, of his heats. He has stepped things up with the doubles here. Ruben, and you've been impressed by him performing the S-loop, a move that you invented many years ago. And not only impressed by his S-loop, uh, also by the strategy that he's going with. I think he uh, did it right by grabbing a big kite and then switching to his six to see if he can get enough height uh, for those doubles, and he surely did. And uh, you could see in his uh, last semi-final uh, heat that he performed really, really well. I really like that last move because he was able to combine a board off with the double kite loop and we hadn't seen that yet already. Right, let's roll the next move. Oh, on the drone, nice. Back so, roll. Here we have a huge 
Contraloop, quad back roll board off from Andrea Principi, going absolutely massive. Scoring well into the eight point, if not a nine. Yeah, that was a nice move there, just how much height that he got on that. He really has been getting the height points ticked off. We know all the time, we always say it, judges really like to see height. What made you choose that one, Sam? Was it just the best example of a height, big power move you, you liked? It's the amplitude. It's incredible how high these three are able to go, and it's really been the difference today. Yeah, and it's uh, not only the height that uh, Andrea obviously was going for, also the steeziness. He was claiming that trick in the air that shows you the control that he has. In the air? What, like, yeah, I'm going to land this. That's you wouldn't want to crash that, would you? Doing exactly. That? We do see it. Okay, let's see the next trick. Again, it's uh, our man Lorenzo. Talk us through this, Sam. I thought this S loop was incredibly ingress aggressive with a really low kite angle. We haven't seen any riders get the kite that extreme today. I saw your face, Ruben, when that move went down. We both almost winced, thinking that's going straight down to hell. And he managed to pull it back up. We're going to see it again. And it was how aggressive he sends it down. If something goes wrong there, there, it's, it's curtains. It's over. Yeah, he definitely got leveled with the kite, and uh, that's what you want. He didn't get the absolute biggest height on this jump, but he still went for it, and that was pretty risky. And uh, I think the judges absolutely love that. Big scorer. And the, yeah, the S loop, it's called that way. I invented it uh, in 2010 or 2009. And uh, it's, yeah, you do the mega loop, you pull it one way, and then at the critical section, you just turn it the other way, creating some free fall and a, definitely a, a big yank forward, putting a lot of pressure on the kite, and it's just scary to do. And he's brought this into the competition, the semi final stages. We're going to see these riders in the final look at those scores, Sam, and think, wow, they have scored really well. I think we're going to see everything in this final. Sam, what is your final move that you've got to share with us? The final move is, I think, I believe so, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the only nine-point move we've seen today of Lorenzo in yeah. the dying moments of that trick. I thought it was incredible. Massive amplitude, adding a double kite loop with rotation and a board off. Yeah, he, he just was so in control. Guys, he's on a new brand here. He's with Harlem. He's joined Harlem not many, I think less than a month ago. He is so connected to that kite to perform those moves. We always say this as kiteboarders, how we feel one with the kite. You either are or you aren't. And, and he's gone straight in. He's doing everything, maybe above and beyond, Ruben. Like, this has been a good move for him. Yeah, 100%. I mean, riding a six-meter Harlem kite, it's, uh, yeah, it's fast, it's aggressive. He's loving it. He's in tune with it. And he's showing that he can defend his title. And uh, he's onto the final. So definitely a big congratulations to him for uh, sorting out his uh, career and uh, showing us the biggest moves ever. Sam, thanks for joining us in here. You spend so much time in there helping to direct things, look at the video clips, and just having that insight from you that's looked at, I mean, I don't know how many screens you've got in front of you, but uh, it's a pleasure to have you in the box with us. It's great to be here, boys. It's nice to show you some of the best tricks we've seen today. Let's roll the final. Well, final times coming up shortly. If you have just joined us here at the Red Bull King of the Air, where have you been? We have been here for how much now? About two and a half hours now. It's six o'clock is the local time. They're giving the riders a bit of a breather. And we've had a real luxury of running the day over, uh, running the event over two days. Sometimes we run it in full one day, but I like it like this, guys. We get sort of a three hours mega power focus. And I think it's good for the riders too, who are now down on the beach, three of them preparing for a big final, Ruben. Yes, of course. And that's exactly why we have a waiting period because the conditions determine when we can run the Red Bull King of the Air here in Cape Town. And luckily here we are blessed uh, yeah, halfway through the waiting period with some phenomenal conditions. A nice tablecloth sitting over the table mountain here. Uh, the Cape Doctor blowing full power. Thousands of spectators on the beach and the, just the best extreme big air riders in the world here on your screens competing for that crown. Before Who I will be king. Sorry, Ruben. Before I let you go, Sam, I just wanted to ask you, all three of us have been in a final here before. We've got through. We've gone. We've had that feeling. What are they feeling now, Sam? I think you. a lot of relief. They've made it to the final. They've done the hard work. Now they can really let it go and just put everything on the line for this last trick. They've done all the work. Now they can just let it flow and do the best they can. And for you, Ruben? I think that's a, it's a good point. You know, I think these riders uh, learn and perform through play. And I think they're in their pure element by having three friends on the water, thousands of spectators roaring for them. Um, yeah, I think, don't think this is going to be any short of uh, spectacular. These guys have got the biggest moves in the sport and uh, perhaps we're going to see some tents uh, being landed soon. Yeah, thank you guys and thank you very much, Sam Light, just leaving the booth, getting ready for that final. I think that was a great word that Sam used there, relief. 
relief I've got as far as I can possibly go. Oh, and we're about to see the unbelievable mega loop from our man in the plane. Is it Mr. Mr. Douglas? Is that his name? Davidson, right? Pete oh, Davidson. Mr. Pete Davidson. Throwing a Pete Davidson. Is he a long lost brother of Pete Rose? And the Pete Rose. Oh, phenomenal move. I love that one. So uh, we've uh, got about three minutes uh, or four minutes to the start of the heat. We just went into sequence. Um, so the riders are on the water getting ready for their ultimate dream uh, final here at the Red Bull King of the Air 2023. Thank you so much for tuning in here. You're with me, Ruben Lenten, Lewis Crathern, and Colin Hackroot from the commentary booth here on the event side, reporting live to all the biggest tricks you will ever see. Colin, welcome back. Thank you, sir. I'll tell you what, gents, the conditions outside, mouthwatering to say the least it is absolutely epic it is just a hay i almost want to say like a haze like a mist of wind the wind is so thick it looks like mist almost that's how that's how much pumping it is out there i almost want to say hats off to the the filter on the cameras for making it look so clean and calm on our footage here but it is a mayhem down there sand blasting everywhere so this wind is just filling in even more and more for what is going to be an epic final gents can't believe it here we are and just good vibes here on the beach in cape town the whole community is here uh, everybody's been frothing and looking forward to this event and today it's finally here the finals of the Red Bull King of the Air 2023 who will be crowned Red Bull King of the Air. Mouthwatering like a piece of Budavost on a brown flayed braai. Yeah, so Lewis, I declare you a South African, my man. <laughs> Excellent yes. work. By a donkey. Yeah, there we go, even more to, to put the cherry on the cake. but. Um, Okay, guys, yes, quick, quick, Epic. quick debrief. Um, who is gonna take it? Who do you think? Oh, wow, yeah. Lorenzo, I, Lorenzo, Lorenzo yep. Ruben. He again, he's just tapped into that consistency. Yep. The same consistency that won him the crown last year. You know, it, it, he's just he's just tapped into it, and 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 it's earned him the highest trick of the day so far. I mentioned earlier, he was the first rider last year to do two nine-point tricks ever at the King of the Air. And here this year he's got the highest the highest score. So yep. the man way to your right, starting from the right, Lorenzo Cassati. These are our finalists, gents, ladies and gents, the finals for the 2023 Red Bull King of the Air, Lorenzo Cassati, last year's winner on your right from Italy. Who's we got in the middle, gents? Andrea Principe. And I think he's gonna take it. I'm going out. You Ruben, you said Lorenzo Cassati, I'm saying Principe because I think he knows what it takes to win. I think he's seen what Lorenzo's done and I think he's able to duplicate it. We'll um, go on to your pred uh, prediction in a second, Colin, but Ruben, continue. I mean, he can manifest like no other. Andrea Principe, he, uh, I can already see him wear the crown, but uh, Lorenzo Cassati and Jeremy Berlando both have got the tricks in the back to just kick him off, uh, kick him off his path, his chosen path. And uh, yeah, let's see. I mean, I think Lorenzo is doing a very good job pulling off those doubles on his six meter kite, whereas Andrea Principe was riding his eight meter kite. He did pull an S loop, uh, but yeah, I'm uh, curious to see uh, who can keep his head cool and uh, make the right choice. I mean, and, and head cool and make the right choice. That's the point I want to make on. Andrea was also one of the dominating riders last year. And in the finals, just fell flat. Not even a first or a second, got to a third. So can he learn from those lessons I from last year? I like what you mentioned, Lewis, about your prediction about Andrea. Adapting to what Lorenzo has been doing. Like you said, he can duplicate that. This is going to be a fascinating test of character, I almost want to say. Oh, and I, I need to bring you this stat. We talk about Cassati winning this, okay? This year, so far, Lord, Lords of Tram, semis, guess who beats him? Principi. Spain, Big Air World Championships, semi-finals, guess who beats him? Principi. Yeah. I wonder if he can shake that off here. Uh, you know, he is the champion, and he's got to think like a champion. And like you just said, Colin, Principi has got to try and not even think about what happened last year. That must be on his mind, you know, like, but, he, but he's got to get rid of that. Belando's the one with the free with the free, uh, free pass here. Here we go then, boys. It's on. Green oh. flag for the final oh. here with Cassati taking it away here with a double back roll, double oh. mega loop, kicking it off very, very nicely. Cool sound effect there from the plane to kick us off. Ladies and gentlemen, oh. strap in Jeremy Belando. Back roll, double back roll, board off mega loop. Tons of high, not the lowest aggressive kite angle, but strap in, guys. Finals 2023 Red Bull King of the Air. Little nose grab on the end of Woo. that as well, which the judges will like to see. There it goes then. Davidson, Pat Davidson, Pat Put, Davidson. Pulling some loops of his own. And there we go. Cassati. Again with a double mega loop board off and a front rotation added yeah. there on the way down. 
working that doubles. What a start. Wow, here Andrea Principe kicking things off for him with a double contra loop, which Ooh. we haven't seen yet. Here we go, he's working. I wonder what size he's on now. What is it, is it a six? No. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah, he did. I think it might be a six here. So, wow, all the action going off here. What a shot here then. Pat Davidson in the background, just going crazy in his plane, which uh, I think was supposed to come just before the final, but... Making, <laughs> the making some noise for the guys. I hope the Cheering riders aren't focusing on that. Like, hey. Adding some extra wind there. Jeremy Belando currently in first place, but these, score, these positions are going to chop and change as Cassati moves up. Andrea Principi with an 8.28. Oh, Here we go. Perfect kicker hit there by uh, Andrea Principi going again Big. for the double contra loop board wow. off. Oh. He's working. He's, he's taking it to the other riders now. Double contras coming in. This is crazy. These guys exploding here into the final as expected. There in the front of your screen, Jeremy Belando with the first ever final appearance for him. He will be guaranteed a podium finish as he spots a kill. Oh, good timing on the kicker. Wow. Massive. Double front row board spin with a mega loop and an added rotation and oh, that wow. steezy nose grab. I, I think we're about to see, this could be interesting. I think we're about to see the ceiling of a non-double move here. I think so. I, for think I don't think you can do a move bigger than that yeah. with a single loop. So will it get into the realms of the doubles? Is it even worth doing that is my question to you guys. For him, especially for his style of riding, Jeremy being consistent from day one here. Cassati in the yellow vest in front of you, heading out, he spots a kicker, and and lifts his kite up. Boy. S -loop. S loop even more aggressive than the one before he had more heights on this one he just yanked on his bars as kai stalled for a second it's gonna be interesting to see what score drop but look at these scores dropping in gentlemen 8.7.5 wow guys the action is absolutely unfolding nicely as we have hoped for as we expected but this is just phenomenal guys and what these are all friends you know with massive links to italy most of them from there so of course Belando flying under the spanish flag but this is so exciting like okay so Still waiting for that trick to come in, I think, from Jeremy Belando of that move. And reminder, this is a long final. 15 minutes given to these riders to perform all of their stuff. So we're likely to see well over 10 tricks here. But Principi bringing the doubles too. And one must think he's got more doubles up his sleeve. Are we going to see Belando switch to doubles soon, guys? He's been so happy on that kite so far, but I think he's got to. So who's going to unhook and who's going to do the doubles? Like, I don't know if uh, Jeremy can double this kite. I haven't seen him do it, I think. Well, Jeremy getting eight points on that last trick, exactly eight. Andrea, the ocean just bumping out in front of him. These guys are going to have to negotiate both wind and waves. Yep. So yep. many dimensions to yep. this big air discipline. It's not just as simple as yanking on a bar, but look at the speed at which Cassati is having as he pops over. Oh, Cassati, late timing on the kicker there. He had his eyes on the prize and he's going for the double. He delayed it a little bit. late bit. for me, that one. He's yeah. happy with the move, technically. But you're right, Ruben. Why, why, Ruben, doesn't it score as well if you delay that last loop? Well, here we got Andrea Prinsby again with a double contra loop. He seems to be loving it and uh, he thinks he can up his score by keep doing them higher and higher. Um, but yeah, he delayed that uh, double or the second loop on the double mega loop just because yeah, he didn't have enough height. He wanted the kite to climb and make it a little bit less extreme. That was the only way to save it for him. Uh, so, yeah, the judges will definitely take that in consideration. Principi performing double contra loops, guys, yeah. maybe not as extreme as double kite loops because it's the front hand, the kite's going forwards and out of the window to start with. You can see that with the power that's going through him, but he's, he's definitely free-falling quite a lot with those yeah. moves. I like what Andrea's doing. I think if he can get more aggressive with that kite loop angle, Lewis, as you said, adapting. There was a kicker out there at the back. There's Jeremy Berlando riding full speed at the kicker. Can he time it or is it closing on him? Oh, he just got clipped, his foot swinging out like... Oh, and he catches the board! He's fixing it. Oh, what a fix there. What a Very repair, good. repaired it, yeah. That, I mean, most people would just be desperate to get the other foot back in, but he just did that. He just keeps believing and uh, keeps containing and uh, keeps his head cool throughout that move. But here's Andrea Principe, who also got a nice kicker. Double here. And he went for a, an S-loop with a board off. The first ever S-loop board off at the King of the Air. We just see these new tricks storming every year, especially over the last two years. I saw that throughout the year. It was very, very curious to see if it would make it to the King of the Air. But here we Gents, a new move in the final. How special. But clearly his S-loop was less aggressive than, oh. than uh, the one Cassati was pulling. It his, crashed there. His kite angle wasn't as aggressive, so he let the kite come up a little bit and then swung it the other way. So the judges will also keep a close eye on that. But what a riding here from Lorenzo Cassati and Andrea Principi. Jeremy Berlando in the final of their Red Bull King of the Year 2023. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting these guys and the event to go next level. Jeremy, Jeremy Berlando then with a the third score. Only needs a 9.99.
Oh no, it's, uh, it's dropped in now, his third score. You only and, uh, need a 10, mate. You got only it. only need a 10, mate. Just but this is incredible, James. Just these, these positions that these guys are training here, blow for blow. As we see Kasati, the ocean just flattening out on them as he heads towards Robin Island. But, gents, a 9.18 for Andreas Eslu Borov. But here's Jeremy. Again, what a takeoff, getting such he's a He's going height. massive, and he's because it's on, he's on, I think he's on an eight meter kite compared to the others. So he's got height advantage, the power, and that's the difficulty for him is does he drop down to a six? The others are riding, making a six work. But this is the difference between yesterday and today is the riders can take sixes in conditions. So we see another double, back roll, double back, double back roll, board off. Double mega loop, what a landing then yes. from Lorenzo Casati. Technically, he's got everything there. He's got the double, he's got the board off, double back roll. This is really impressive stuff, but this is on a six. You could handle a nine out there if you had to, but that's not what the sport's become about now. Yeah, oh, if, if Casati can get some more height, but Andrea being rewarded for that S loop board off, the first ever at the King of the Air, 9.18. Yeah. Here he goes again. Catching a little kicker on the inside, doing his uh, front roll board off contra loop. I don't know why it keeps going for so many contra loops. It's not the, not what you need in the final right now. Maybe it's just really concentrated. Contrated. Contratated. <laughs> I am contratated. Oh, look at that. Eight minutes left. The first seven minutes of this heat has flown by. Ladies and gentlemen, the final. Currently, Andrea Principi in first, Cassati second, Berlando third. But they've been just trading positions. This is just shows you how tight this final is. Jeremy, oh, good yeah. timing, huge tornado, board off, mega loop. Nicely, I just love the height that this guy's getting, but it, it, it is interesting. Oh, but it's also interesting to note, Andrea has dropped a 9.42. The scores are getting ridiculous wow. now. But Lando's got to get Dublin soon, guys. I think he's going to have to change soon and just change his tactics. He's going, he's doing the moves as good as you could do them. But look, his highest score is, uh, I mean, his two low scores are 7. Point Four two seven point five eight. The other two riders here now pushing into the nines and potentially might have nines for all three of their top scores. They all deserve to be here. That's very clear. So oh. nine point four two to bring you, Ruben. We haven't seen. Yeah, oh, hundred percent. But who can unhook? That might be also uh, one coming in for the overall impression score. Maybe Andrea is going to go for his double handle pass. He's got that. Andrea, are we going to see the first nice. rider ever in the King of the Air to score three nine-point tricks? Oh, there, the kicker just fading out. Yeah, He'll come back in towards the beach. That's the devastating thing we talk about, that when you see them, it's too late. And this is what I'm impressed with the riders. That wasn't a good kicker. Back roll into an S loop. And another back roll. And then he goes, oh, no, 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 he didn't just try that. He what? didn't just try that. He, he didn't, just try that. he didn't, he didn't just what try that. Heck, dude, it was two rotations during an S loop and he tried to land that blind or wrapped, however you like to call it, that but landing backwards. That would break the scoring system. Full out, no absolutely doubt. Absolutely crazy, that would have been a 10. I don't believe he even tried to land. I mean, even if he landed that, I don't think he needed to land that to wrap. Maybe a little replay. Well, if we have time, Sam, sorry, we've been pushing <laughs> Sam. We, we, we basically <laughs> broke the replay button on day one and we're told, like, look, that thing can't take that. We're missing stuff. OK, but. so Andrea going for. Sam. Yeah, we have a oh, replay. Here. Nice one. Of so Andrea. He goes front, front rotation. S loop, board off. No, contra loop. Yeah, contra loop. And he's stuck it and he's proud of it because the S loops are starting to open up now. There's new vocabulary of S loops. Principi then five minutes. And 40 seconds, yeah, I think they named that wrong in there for me. That was definitely an S loop for me. On the inside, not what he wanted on the inside there. Or maybe was, the riders now are going through those motions where, what can I do to separate myself? I can't do much more biggies. I've got to go impression. Was that last one an S loop or a contra loop? I thought it was an S loop. Uh, S -loop. Maybe I saw it wrong. I thought it was an S loop, but oh man, Cassati. Board spin, front rotation. Woo! Was Woo. that? Oh, it, well, the wind also dropping on him. Kasati might have to rethink his double strategy here. Doesn't look like he's getting a ton of height. Thankfully for him, he's close enough to his board. As we have five minutes, ladies and gentlemen, five minutes left in this final. In your screen, Andrea Principi. Someone changing coming kite. in. He's changing. We have just received word that Jamie Berlando has yes. changed a kite. Jeremy Berlando is going for Ooh. a smaller kite to keep up with the boys that are throwing S loops and doubles, which are better on a six meter kite. Do you think it's a slingshot? <laughs> Must be. There it is. Yeah, it is a slingshot. We've got slingshot, of course, against Harlem, against Duo Tony. In this final, look at the crowds there. What a scene this is. People free riding in the background. Little do they know they're, well, maybe they do know they're missing the final. Here's a replay. Replay from Jeremy. 
Is this his first double of the King of the Air? Double loop, made late back roll, not good, not super, yeah, wasn't too that aggressive. Hopefully the strategy does work out for him, but uh, good to see him willing to at least change up the strategy, knowing that S-loops, board offs, double mega loop board offs are scoring big here. Four minutes, just over four minutes left. Look at this, blow for blow, we're seeing incredible scores. Kasati. Wow. Oh, boogie, double boogie what? loop, board off. Does he stick it? This could yeah. score big. And the board spin, I think, as well. Ruben, yeah. we're seeing tricks we've never seen landed before in competition. What is this going to score? And then Andrea Principe with an answer of his own, hitting that kicker perfectly, going for tic -tac. a double contra loop, tic tac. Oh, oh that's big let's hope he's all right. That's big. He was still holding on to his board. That can hurt so much. How does he take that? The body was laid right out. That's a rib caner. How has he taken that? I mean, I think one of the reasons his riders are taking is he goes to the gym all the time they take it so yeah. seriously now the way they, they do yoga i mean it's, this was going to be the double from uh, Belando, but for me not getting the same height well, with a board with off. a board off not getting the critical kite angle that is uh, the downside of grabbing a smaller kite is you don't get the height anymore you don't have the power to absolutely steam train yeah. at this kicker and send it to the moon and it turns quick at the moment it looks like jeremy not able to respond with the double loops like kasati and andrea but uh, we're waiting for that score to drop an 8.54 on Kasati's uh, double card loop front row board spin. So you can see needing a 9.66. Andrea still with quite a, a firm seat here in this in this final. But remember guys, there's uh, the three top scoring tricks getting accompanied by a fourth overall impression score to make up the overall heat score, which oh. will be added at the end of the heat. So everything can still happen. It's due to variety and look how stoked he is once again can't believe what he's doing. I, I'd be the same. I mean, we can't believe it. Imagine what it'd be like to be in that frame. Landing move after move. And here we have an S-loop coming in. Oh, it had to be to rat. I, I think now a move here to rat, not quite high enough for me if it's going to be double here. A move to blind or rat yep. or an unhooked maneuver is going to just tick off the impression score. Well, Andrea Principi has been a genius here. Look at his big scores. Two of them involve S-loops. He's learned from what he's seen in that semi-final mm. from Casati, and he's put it into his own riding. Very, very nice replay here. Keeping his composure throughout that move and then just that added rotation before the landing. Can't believe it. Sticking it in the finals, and what a phenomenal ride! Look here from at all that, these guys. ladies and gentlemen. The first time ever at the King of the Air that we have nine, three nine point top tricks. Another first. What? Well, oh, falling out of the sky. Kasati thankfully was able to separate himself from his board there. History being made here, not just at the King of the Air, but in the finals. Double loop there he from Andrea. It. He fancied it too. What we saw, uh, he's, oh. he's, hurt, he's hurt there, I think. I'm not sure, but it was a double loop into an S loop. Ruben, I don't even know what that's called. A snake loop. Snake no. loop. Uh, that was unbelievable. Yep, believe that's guys, a snake uh, loop. The guys have been getting used to riding these smaller type of kites for these double loops, these S loops, and now even snake loops. So they do a double loop and at the last one they uh, at the S loop, and it's just absolutely ridiculous. They might need hey some no. more wind. That's the tiredness just kicking in oh, there, Ruben. No. But no, I mean, this, man, is, this guy can go for days. This is incredible, James. Look at that 9.74, 9.42, 9.18. 9 a first at the King of the Air for the top three scores to be within the nine point range. What a time for Andrea to bring out that record at the king of the air oh, lewis your prediction about him is turning out to be true but it's not over yet oh there we go Stand for another are double. we going for oh no it's what snake an absolute oh. devastator he is trying something new he needs to be innovative he needs a move that has never been done wow jeremy has looked like he switched yep he switched back to his bigger kite I wonder if he's going to try and stick something to wrap or oh. blind or unhook as well. But Andrea actually 20 performs seconds. another move as well there, guys. 15 seconds left. I think Asati was quite a late S loop for that for me. It wasn't right on the mm. money. They need a bit more wind for that. But he's got one more chance to perform something here. Oh, no. oh he thought about it. He thought it. about it. it, did Andrea. Four seconds left, guys, oh. of this final. Wow. Two. One wow. oh, on the what buzzer, taking off, going for a double mega loop with a double back row on the inside. Lorenzo Cassati, that was. But what an epic action here during the Red Bull King of the Air 2023. Thank you so much for watching this show with us here with Lewis Crathern in the boot and Colin Heckroot reporting live here at the Red Bull King of the Air in Cape Town. Wow, gents, our 2023 final is done. We now anxiously await the results, but Lewis, as you said, Andrea did have the ability, does have the ability to adapt, and he did. My goodness, three nine-point high tricks.
He is holding his leg a little bit there. Let's hope it's nothing serious, but thankfully for him, it was right at the end. Maybe it's enough for him. Job done. Well, time will tell as we... Oh, but there the crowds are going to make their way now to the prize-giving area where we will crown a king. But, oh, gentlemen, thoughts on that unbelievable final. What, oh, what, an, ener Ruben. what an energetic final. These guys knew what it takes to, uh, yeah, to take home the crown. Uh, Andrea Principe absolutely stepping it up, also going on his six-meter kites uh, to perform those epic S-loops that we've just witnessed and uh, taking on Lorenzo Cassati uh, with, uh, yeah, with his double mega loops of his own. And uh, Jeremy Berlando uh, switching the kite, not committing to, uh, to a small kite, but it seems like uh, yeah, the guys have done enough to uh, make it into the final and uh, we will see who will make it to the top spot. Lovely shot there. I believe that's um, Andrea. I think that's his mum down there perhaps just such an incredible moment for them and you know what this this says to me um colin is that these riders didn't really have to go out of second or third gear to get here i know yeah. the wind has picked up today and it's got stronger and allowed us to see these doubles but they had so much more in their locker than they were showing us they yeah. just did what it took and look at to the emotion through. and happiness going down here and oh. uh, wow it, it almost put stairs to my eyes this is incredible scenes unfolding here ladies and gentlemen 2023 king of the air final we see Principi embracing what we believe is mother there as they were looking on their phone as well through the scores. What a time for this young man to set another record here at the King of the Air. Wow. And he's done it, I think. They've just checked the scores coming in. What a moment that must be between mother and son. And the elation, this, the, your mum worries sometimes when you're doing these moves, you know, like it's, it's huge. This is unreal. Ladies and gentlemen, look at a very, very emotional Andrea Principi as we have received confirmation that he is our new 2023 Red Bull King of the Air winner. Lorenzo Cassati in second place and Jeremy Belando in third. They are going to celebrate on the beach. What, what emotions, what scenes. Gents, this is, this is surreal. I cannot believe it. We've saved the best for last. 100%. What a dream come true for these gents. Uh, they have absolutely showed that they belong at the top of uh, big air kiteboarding here at the Red Bull King of the Air 2023. Three best friends made it to the final and absolutely sent it to the moon. So uh, big congratulations to Andrea Principe for manifesting, for putting in the work, dedication and making it happen. Thank you so much for the epic show here, Andrea, Lorenzo and Jeremy taking a moment just to get in the water. I mean, there's, we spend all this time, we line up these clips, we've got it all planned and structured, but there's sometimes in broadcasting that you just don't know what to say as a commentator. For me, seeing that shot with him and his mother, that, that was one of those moments where you just don't know what to say. It's just such a wonderful moment. Now, the realization starting to kick in now with the elation shared from his friends, the Italians are such a, they've just stormed into Big Air. Where were they? And then bang, loads wow. of them just came out of nowhere. Taking it to the next level with double mega loops, even triple mega loops and the S loops combined with board offs and rotations all above 20 meters. Absolutely ridiculous riding and uh, just so stoked to see where this sport is headed. And uh, I think it's in, uh, in great hands. Oh man. Andrea will be superstar as he embraces his fellow Italiano Magnifico from the Italians dominating this event from the get-go with a solid final performance from all three riders but Lewis I just love your prediction you know from the beginning Cassati was definitely the more consistent one but when it mattered most oh Love. Andrea pulled it out of the bag, and what a what a year he has had. He finds it with the best riders in the history of our sport. We think about guys like Aaron Hadlow, Kevin Langray. They find a way in the toughest times. How many times has this rider been up against someone in this competition? He's crashed the first trick or something, and you think, oh, here's a challenge for you, and he just comes back and feels and, and just finds a way. He has got such a competition brain on him. Of course, he's got the ability, but. What a competition brain to look at what happened at the semi-final, react in a way where he brought something new into it. We just saw all this new stuff by Lorenzo and he's managed to go to the judges, but, but what about this as well? I mean, the S-loop board off, we saw it throughout the year at other events and what a time to bring it onto the big air kiteboarding scene as he just took the board off and it earned him a 9.42. The uh, Timing, 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 he did enough to advance through to the rounds. Lorenzo definitely being the standout up until the semifinals and then Andrea just responding. 
with just pure magic, just <laughs> pure Italian magic. Yeah, in this in this final, as he embraces one fan and family member and fellow team rider after the next, as he makes his way up to the most coveted crown, to receive the most coveted crown in all of Big Air kiteboarding. As Be there's Beto Gomez, an absolute legend, also embracing his fellow team rider from Duotone. What a moment there, gents. Oh, I'm getting emotional here. <laughs> yeah, I got emotional earlier with the support from his mom there being on the beach. He's got his family here. He's got the friends. Uh, he's got the whole community cheering for him. And uh, yeah, what a stoke. I would like to teach you the word mudita. Mudita means uh, enjoying somebody else's happiness. And I just get goosebumps watching Andrea win and living his absolute dream. So enjoying somebody else's happiness is one of the most beautiful feelings in the world. And what a sight this is. I now want you, wherever you're listening to this, at home, maybe in your van, I don't know, even on your phone in the toilet. Look at all these people here and just what a moment. We've seen that, that lovely near the ocean with the family and close friends. He's now about to make his way into the arena. This is very special in kiteboarding when you start to see the biggest crowds that we get at, ki at kiteboarding events. And it will now change the feeling he gets because he'll be purely able to share this with the people now who will cheer for him and it will be his time on the podium. And Ruben, you, Ruben you're going to have to go soon. Yep, I think uh, we still have some uh, epic prize giving to attend and uh, crown the legend, uh, Andrea Principe, uh, with his uh, trophy, or his well-earned trophy. Oh, no, so Ruben, all the best outside there. Wishing we were with you, but uh, Ruben will now make his way to the prize giving area to award these well-deserved champions there's andrea principi in front of you another uh, another um, um another award that will be given out at the event today is the mystic move of the day uh um, lewis talk us a little bit about that well of course every single event we want to crown the guy that's just gone for it and landed the best move that's going to be a tough one uh to say i think there's 1250 euros uh, something like that for this move maybe it's gone up this year i'm not sure but i would not like to call the move of the day. I mean, that final had hundreds of moves, it seemed, that could yeah. easily be that. But he'll be up for a shout, that's for sure. The Mega Loop KGB stands out for me as well from Edgar Ulrich. But the scene is set here for the prize giving. What there is uh, J Bo, Jeremy Bolando. And uh, this is this is a big moment for these. But what a moment this is, all three friends. You just can't write this, can you? No, no, no. Stuff that legends are made of. Three Italians. I mean, last year, they didn't earn just. Not, not, not only last year did they get their first podium finish, but two podium finishes last year. And the nation of Italy now seeing three on the podium. Yes, Jeremy does ride for Spain as well. So he is proud of both heritages, the heritage that he has representing the sport of kiteboarding from Europe, these gentlemen. It's what a, what a scene right there. Do you know what I think is nice about this final as well, Colin, is that all three of these riders did everything they could they did everything. They did, none of them are going to go home and think, oh, I could have done better. Absolutely. Brilliant stuff. But we are now going to cross over to the prize giving. So enjoy the prize giving with us as we award the, the winner, the rightful crown. All right, so we're just going to get underway with the prize giving. We're going to start off with the mystic, most extreme move of the day. To hand out the prize of 3,000 euros, we're going to bring up Max Blum. And the winning move... And bear with me because it's a long one. A double cart loop, double back roll, board off. Italy's Lorenzo Cassati. <laughs> Lorenzo collecting himself the uh, mystic, uh, most extreme move of the event. And 3,000 euros from uh, Max Blum. And I'm going to hand over now to Ruben Linton to hand out the final awards. The final award. Wow, wow, wow. What a day. What a day. Lauren, you absolute legend, man. Fucking send it. Thank you guys so much for an epic day. Tyrone, thank you. And uh, now we're going to the prize giving, crowning these legends for the epic bigger action that we witnessed today. So in third place, we've got... Ooh, Jeremy Berlando! Give it up, give it up! Ooh. 
Nice one. Congratulations. And then we're moving on to the second place. Of course, Lorenzo Cassate from Italy. What a show, what a show. Eww. Winning Mystic Move of the day, Lorenzo Cassati, and here in second place, and in first place, the legendary Andrea Principi from Italy. Congratulations, boys. Here is your new king, Andrea Principi. Congratulations, what a legend, well deserved. Thanks for the show, gents. Andrea. Congratulations, boss. You manifested this, you worked hard. How are you feeling, brother? Man, I have just no words, you know. Today, guys, is a big day, guys. You know what? That, that today I reached the infinity. In uh, many years, I will look back, and I will look back at this day, you know, that was my mission, get the trilogy, and reach the infinity, and today I reach my infinity, because it was my dream since I started kiting. And today I can say that I fucking got it, man. Yeah! Exactly, man. You are living the dream right now, guys. Giving me goosebumps. Let's take the trophy shot. Let's get some champagne flowing. Thank you guys so much for coming down and supporting this event. Sending these riders to the next level. Wow, 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 incredible scenes there. 2023 event results, look at that. Firstly, apologize for the colorful language, but I'm sure you can understand the emotion yeah. from the winner there. What a lovely interview, how much that meant to the, him. The emotion is absolutely electric and understandably so. Andrea Principi pulling off the performance of a lifetime, a second Red Bull event win for him in this year alone. But look at that. Andrea Principi, Lorenzo Cassati, Jeremy Belando, our three finalists, tied for fourth. Jason van der Spey will be proud of that result. Edgar Ulrich, also an incredible performance from Jamie Overbeck. Tough work and cut out for him. But there are some of your results now from the 2023 event. Tied in seven. Gil Flucht, he'll be back again. For sure. Most of these riders will be back again. Last year we had eight rookies. All eight of them were back this year. So talent is here and talent is here to stay. Mark Jacobs, they're also happy with the performance today. These are the men who fell out a little bit early in round two. Beto Gomez, Cohen Van Dijk, Timo Burschema, Ayrton Arthur and Josh. Always hard, that position, yeah. Colin. But you know what? It's so tough to even get in this event these days with hundreds of videos. It's, it's an achievement on its own to say you actually competed in the Red Bull King of the Air. Oh, no. Absolutely brilliant scenes. As you can see, still plenty of wind out there. But what an event we have had today. Ladies and gentlemen, records, triple nines in the final. Andrea is going to soak in this glory for a very, very long time to come. But, uh, Lewis, your final thoughts for the day? They took it to another level. And I think that, that quote from Andrea Principi, that he took it to infinity, will go down in history. Wonderful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, from us here in the commentary box, I want to thank you for joining us for what has been a sensational, another, yet another sensational King of the Air event. The 2023 King of the Air has, will go down in history as one of the most epic, three nine-point tricks. But it has been an unbelievable day. Yes, we have been late in the, the waiting period, but finally we got the conditions that we wanted. So from us here in the commentary box, I want to thank every one of you. Stay tuned on RedBullKingOfTheAir.com for highlights after we sign off to see some of the highlights from this epic day.
But uh, what an incredible day it has been. And from us here in the commentary box, I want to thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for post-event material. But until next time, goodbye.